I was watching you on FS1, and I was like, I think I could do him. And like my grandmother said, if you ain't a frog, you better jump in the pond. You know, <laughs> I know that don't mean shit. That don't mean nothing. That will never make no sense. All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice. That's why all my life, I've been grinding all my life. Yeah. All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice. That's why all my life, I've been grinding all my life. Hello, welcome to another episode of Club Shay Shay. I am your host, Shannon Sharp. I'm also the proprietor of Club Shay Shay. The guy that's stopping by for conversation on the drink today is one of the most talented and funniest comedians out. Master impersonator, multi-talented actor and voice actor, a hilarious host, a writer, producer, international funny man, every comedian's favorite comedian, the man of one million voices, the impresario of impressions. Whoa, Godfrey. <laughs> oh! Finally in the house. It's been a while. Club Shay Shay. Oh, it's been a while. Bless up. Bless up. Bless up. Bless up. Bro, bless we've up. been trying to make this happen for a couple of years yeah. now. Yes, sir. You've been busy. Yes, I mean, the, the yes, pandemic sir. happened and yes, I was all over the place. Yes, sir. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule, stopping by Club Shay Shay. I, I really appreciate, appreciate that. you having out of your busy schedule, <laughs> bringing me here. Because yeah. I ain't going to front. I was like, I told Club Shay Shay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell anybody either. Maybe told one or two people. I say one Yo. or two or one or two hundred. Yeah, I know one or two. <laughs> <laughs> one, but I just want to say this first. Maybe say it to the camera. You all don't understand who the fuck you dealing with. First off, <laughs> give this man his respect. Three times Super Bowl champion. All right. You caught John Elway's passes. Yeah. Fuck are you talking about? One of the hardest throwing quarterbacks ever. I watched you on NBC. All right, Don yeah. Cricky, touchdown, <laughs> Shannon Sharp. And shout out to your brother, Sterling, who was nasty on the Green Bay Packers, even though I'm from Chicago. I hate the Packers, but your brother was cold. Well, I appreciate that. No doubt. Well, since we on the, since we, you know what, let's go ahead and get this. So let me ask you this. Yes. I want to go ahead and, you know, toast right quick. Watch that. I'm going to try this. Hold on. I want you to drink, have a look, just a sip yeah. before you do any impersonations, because I don't want you to do any drunk impersonation. <laughs> okay, okay. Hey. For a non-alcoholic drinker, this is all right. It's smooth. Yeah, see? Because usually when you go, you're like, <coughs> yeah. <coughs> you know? Yeah, this is all right. So, who you coming with? Who you coming with? Who you, who, the first off, who is your first impression? My first person impression that I ever did? No, the first one you want to start with today. Shannon Sharp. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Shannon, I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Here we go. I'm going to ask you a question. So, I'm going to say, uh, so what, <laughs> what, uh, what was your favorite sport growing up as a kid? Uh, my favorite sport growing up as a kid, as a kid. probably, <laughs> I like football, football, then basketball. Basketball. Did mm -hmm. you ever play baseball? Was that nah, nah, I was no. scared of the ball. So how good were you in basketball? Could you dunk? I could. I you was could better dunk? in basketball than I was football. Oh, okay, okay. okay. So uh, did you play in high school? Did you start in grade school? What did you start in? Uh, I played coming up. I mean, obviously, you know, you did all the sports. You played football, yeah, football. ran track, played right. basketball. And so I played all the way through. I uh, started playing. I was probably about fourth or fifth grade and played all the way through high school. With okay. Them. Okay. Um, what was your uh, favorite uh, event in track and field? Were you fast? I was. I ran on the relay teams. I really didn't do a whole lot of uh, individual okay. sprints. I was a, a field event guy. So I long jump, triple jump through triple the disc. Jump. But I was on the four by one and the four by four. Four by, I was on the four by one. Okay. I was the first leg. Oh, first leg. And like my grandmother said, if you ain't a frog, you better jump in the pond. You know, I know that don't mean shit. That don't mean nothing. That will never make no sense. But all the things, <laughs> people are afraid to agree with me because I'm a big motherfucker and I beat your ass. But anyway, so let me ahead. ask you a question. How did you, how did you stumble upon yeah. like, you know what? I can do him. How long did you have to practice and how many did you play it back? Like, okay, okay. make sure I get the, the boys in play. Cause you have the mannerisms. Yeah. I was watching you you know, on FS1. And I was like, I think I could do him. You know, I just was right. like, I was like, Skip. And then Skip helped me. Yeah. <laughs> skip, Skip. Hey, Skip. Skip. Listen, Skip. Skip, I'm going to tell you this, right? I've been in the NFL for a long time. <laughs> right? And I used to, uh, I never had a toilet. <laughs> I had a doo-doo outside in the backyard. I'm like, hey, Skip, I'm going to tell you that right now. No, it's cool. It's cool. But I'm going to tell you, now, how the hell are you going to tell me that the East is going to beat the West? Come on, Skip. Come on. Hmm? Tell me, you know, I, and I just, it's a, it's a, it's a, it, it's like with a lot of impersonators, right? You got Pharaoh, 
You got uh, uh, Ari Spears and it's just you just it just you hear it. And if it's in your range, it's a natural gift. It's right. like when musicians can just go, all right, let me just play. You know, they can play something right. and tune. It's like when they tune it with a piano or a horn. Right. It's the same shit. Like one of my favorite. My first impersonations was was uh, Ali. Okay. When I was like five. Okay. Because my parent, my um, relatives come from Nigeria. Okay. And they would say, "Do do do Muhammad Ali. We we'll give you one dollar." Do I'd be like, "I'm fast. I'm pretty. I shook up the world. I'm the greatest. I told you how it could sell. You too ugly. Joe Frazier's too ugly. Ken Norton's <laughs> too ugly. Uh, George Foreman's too ugly. I'm fast. I must be the greatest." I used to do that at five. Right. Right. And so I was like, okay, I could do voices. And so I would t- cartoons, cartoon right. characters. And what's up, Doc? I would do that. Right. So I was just always into imitating people. And then when I started comedy, actually, when I started comedy, it was like my first, my first time I was in a comedy team for a year. Okay. All right. Yeah, this is Chicago. I'm from Chicago. You know, shout out to all the Chicago comedians. Because I heard the Chicago, they say Chicago got the best comedian. That's what Lil Rel told me. But I, uh, Lil Rel might be right on that one because Chicago. One what thing, about the DMV? You D- know, they got Quay DMV, and, and they got, Listen, man, I ain't from the DMV. Fuck <laughs> all that. I said it. I said Chicago got the best. You got me. You got Dion Cole. You got D. Ray Davis. You got Lil Rel. Bernie Mac. Bernie. Shout out to Bernie Mac. Rest his soul. And there's other cats. My man Evan Lionel who literally started Bernie Mac in his career, who literally started comedy for black comics in Chicago, Evan Lionel, got to give him his credit. But there's a lot of a lot of great comics from Chicago. You got Adele Gibbons. Yes. You, oh, you yeah. Adele Gibbons. You got, oh, oh, um, what's, um, oh, God, from the talk. Ah, oh, sure. Cheryl Underwood. Underwood is from Chicago. We got a lot of great. And then a lot of younger people coming up, but yeah, we're all at Craig Robinson. Right. Okay. Craig Robinson yes. from Chicago. So you have a lot. It's something about Chicago. We're all different. Mm-hmm. We're all different styles. Everybody says none of you are, are the same. I said there's something about Chicago, but I started out in a comedy team. Right. And a team with another guy was Godfrey and Alexander. And, and our, my first time on stage, it was impersonations. I, we would do, we, it was a duo thing, so he played like a hypnotist, <laughs> and he would hit, it was some corny shit, but he would hypnotize me and shit. He's like, oh, I'm a hypnotist. I'm going to make you do different people. So my first was Bill Cosby. Okay. And I know now Cosby is kind of a taboo, a taboo, but fuck it. You know, let's go for it. it. So I'd be like, you see the people and you got to understand, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And so I did Cosby. Then I did Johnny Carson. Okay. Because I said, you know, nobody's seen a black dude do Johnny Carson. So Correct. I would go, wow, good stuff. I did not know that. Right. Wow. <laughs> Shannon, this is a great show. Wow. <laughs> Bomb. I would do that. So it was Ali. It was, those were my first impersonations, but I never really I didn't dwell on impersonations because if you if you if you count if you depend on the impersonations your act gets corny. Right. So and I I made sure when I was doing comedy um, in Chicago I moved I finally I did it for about three years and I I went solo, and you know what's so funny, the person who told me to leave my comedy team was Steve Harvey. The guy. Yep. So was that before where, be, before he told were you uh, uh, impersonating him before or I, after I, he told? Oh, I was impersonating Steve only like three four years ago. Okay, I never impersonated right. him. I wasn't interested, or, you know. But um, he told me because one day there was a club called All Jokes Aside in Chicago. Okay, it was the number one black comedy club for seven years. Shout out to Raymond Lambert. Mary Lindsay and James Alexander. It was the number one club in Chicago. Cause a lot of times when you would do black con- urban rooms, yeah. it would be a black night at a white establishment. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, but this was Chicago was a black comedy club in the nineties that was open seven days a week. All right. And so that's from there. I went solo. I broke up with the guy that I was with. I wanted to go solo. So I how difficult to... was that? Because you had got. I'm sure you guys had been together for what yeah, three, for four, about, five years. About two years. About two, years. About okay. two strong years. Okay. You know. And I was like, I was a little because he. I don't think he was as passionate as I was in it. I was writing most of the sketches, and then I was like, you know what? I think I'm gonna go solo. So I started writing shit on the side, like just in case. Right. This does. This doesn't go well. I'm gonna do shit on my own. Right. So. I started writing stuff on my own and I, it was kind of easy to keep it moving because right. you know what I'm saying? I just started doing shit on my own. I didn't right. even really tell him. I okay. just started going on my own. And then, um, from there, 
Um, I met, ran into TK Kirkland. Okay. Okay. Now, people, if you know TK, TK Kirkland, teacher the motherfucking K. I ran into him because I would do shows with him at this club, all jokes aside. And then TK said, God three, man, I need to take you to New York City. He's like, <laughs> I like your style. You kind of corny, but you know what? I like you and I'm going to find you a manager. So he found me and this is facts. He found me my first manager. Right. And, um, you know, remember Anthony Michael Hall? Remember yeah. Breakfast Club, the movie Breakfast Club, uh, or, or six, uh, 16 Candles? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the little yeah, yeah. White with Molly kid, Ringwall. Little, the little Molly Ringwall with the little <laughs> blonde kid. His dad was my manager. Okay. Tom Chistaro, they, they've passed him. Him and his partner, David Kleeman. TK hooked us all up. It was me, Mike Epps. That was, it was like John Leguizamo. It was, wow. uh, yeah, it was, uh, Sandra Bullock. It was, and this is me moving to New York City. I packed up. Drove 20 hours. You know what I'm saying? I said, it's time. I got my agent. Mm -hmm. This is all from TK doing this. Right. TK, TK, at the time, criminal shit. Right. Take people's credit cards, getting arrested shit. This man found me, my right. agency. Right. So as soon as I got to New York City on my own, I started doing the New York circuit. You know, that's when I um started to, I met, I would meet like a Tracy Morgan and all these of them, like Chappelle, everybody. I was meeting all kinds of people. And that was when, you know, I said, yeah, I'm going to start doing this on my own. You know I mean? When I drove 20 hours in a, right. a U-Haul truck, right? 20 hours with my friend Bernadette, who was in Love Jones. We drove 20 hours. Wow. And then from there, that was when I started to, you know, and my manager at the time said, you can do a lot of voices, but don't count on that. Don't make that your thing. Okay. Do build on your, your comedy, mm -hmm. build on your jokes and your material. And I said, okay, I'm going to do that. So the voice thing now, people didn't even know I did all these voices until the pandemic. Wow. Nobody knew because mm -hmm. I've, I've auditioned for, uh, different like sketch comedy shows, Living Color, didn't get that shit. Uh, SNL re rejected me three times. Three times. I auditioned for SNL in, was it 98, 99? Right. It was me, Tracy Morgan, Jimmy Fallon, Kevin James, a lot of motherfuckers. I got a standing ovation that night because I did Cosby. I did Johnny Carson. I did, I don't even remember the other people I did, but I did a bunch of them, did a bunch of characters and I didn't even get it, get to the second round. Wow. Didn't even make it to the second round. And you know, as a young comic, I'm only three years in. I'm auditioning for SNL. Right. Eddie Murphy is my superhero. Eddie Murphy? Like, I might be able to do what Eddie Murphy did. Cause I saw Eddie Murphy in college. Right. Okay. When he was doing the Raw tour. Yes. He came by mm -hmm. our school and I was like, shit. I was like, damn. And another, I have to give Tommy Davidson credit from the DMV. Mm -hmm. He came and performed in my college. He was one of the main guys that really influenced me to do comedy because in college is when I wanted to do comedy. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. My third year, I was like, I think I want to do comedy. I was a pre-med psych major, mm -hmm. you know, and I was like, yeah, it was Tommy Davidson because Tommy Davidson, I showed him around the campus. He came to my campus, I showed him around. And then some years later, when I got to New York doing comedy in New York, I did this show called Premium Blend. Premium Blend is uh, on Comedy Central. That was when Comedy Central was funny. Right. Oh, <laughs> I know. No. That's when it was live. That was a sneak diss. That's when. But <laughs> <laughs> Comedy Central was dope, you know. And so Premium Blend is like you get up there and you do like seven minutes. So right. this was exciting for me. Right. I've never done TV, uh, comedy on TV. And what's funny as the as 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 things go round and round, Tommy Davidson was the host of that show I was on. Wow. And he remembered me. He said, you dude that showed me around your campus. I was like, yo, you're one of the main reasons I wanted to do comedy. Right. So it was Tommy Davidson. Yeah. Did Growing up, obviously, you, yes. you say you grew up in Chicago. Yeah. Did you always want to do comedy? What did no. you want to do before you discovered comedy? Okay. I thought I was going to be a baseball player. I was a shortstop. I played baseball from uh, Little League up to high school. I thought I was going to be a shortstop. Okay. And I thought I was going to be an astronaut. I wanted to be either an astronaut or a baseball player. That's yeah. what I thought I was going to be because I was a space nerd. Well, there's a lot of things in between that, but okay. <laughs> you no, know, I thought I was going to be a, a baseball player or, yeah, or a shortstop or, or, or um, an astronaut. Yeah. I love You can spaceship. play baseball in space. <laughs> <laughs> On the moon, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I was a space nerd. I wanted to work for NASA. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I thought I was going to, that's what I never thought about comedy, but I loved watching comedies. My family and my parents, we watched comedy. My mother was a big 
uh, movie watcher, especially uh, comedies. Okay. You know, the Three Stooges, Don Knotts, Honeymooners, Dick Van Dyke. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Flip Wilson mm -hmm. show. We were a TV. You know, there was only so many channels she, back then. Yeah. So you watched everything. Right. Carol Burnett. Mm -hmm. You know. Um. You know. You Pryor. People don't realize Pryor was on TV sometimes. Mm -hmm. Red, Red Fox. Yeah. Same. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And uh, that's I never thought about comedy until college. Right. Because people always say, oh, you are you were funny. Why did you start doing comedy? Because people say I was funny. It wasn't even really like that because my friends were funny, too. But in college, I used to always hold court in the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I used to hold court in the cafeteria. And, and I, I was real militant at the time. Uh oh. Yeah. Oh, you want more cry freedom? <laughs> <laughs> I was like Stephen Biko. I was that dude when I got to college. I we you know it, I went to Illinois, mm -hmm. Big Ten, um, and it was about forty thousand students there, eight hundred black, about eight hundred black. Wow. Uh, but we had the biggest fraternal and sororal system in Illinois. We had everybody. We had Spanish fraternities. We had a bunch of white fraternities, but we had the Kappas, the Qs. We had the, uh, alphas. you know, alphas. We had iota phi theta sigma. We had deltas, S, um, sigma gamma rho. We had AKs. We had everybody. So we, all the black people hung together. Right. Stuck together. And the athletes, I went to school where it was Nick Anderson. Okay. Kendall Gill. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Henry Jones. Yeah. Uh, who played for the Bills. Bills. Yeah, I know him. Yeah, Derek Brownlow mm -hmm. and all those. Uh, Jeff George yeah. was our guy. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so I got militant because it, it was just a small group of people. We had our little black Af African-American cultural center, <laughs> right, that was a little dilapidated, but they gave that to us. And so we formed this group, you know, and we said, why don't we start reading books about our people? Why don't they're not teaching us anything? Mm -hmm. So we got into all that shit. Spike Lee movies are playing, right. okay. do the right the thing. thing, all of that. So it was all this, and Public Enemy is playing. We listened to Tribe Called Quest, the brand newbie, and all that other shit. We're listening. So I was very militant and reading all these different books. Like, here we go. Ready? Stolen Legacy, <laughs> ISIS Papers, Francis Cress Welsing, Mal uh, Autobiography of back. Malcolm X. You know, we were, I was reading everything. I was reading another book, um, um, Bucks, Coons, Mulattoes, and, and Mammies, The History of Blacks in Film by Donald Bogle. I was reading, oh yes, yeah, stereotypes yeah. that they still repeat now. Mm -hmm. So I was reading all that. So I was black. Everything was black. Right. Fight the power. Mm. My father would be like, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you, what, what is all of this black? It's okay, but what are you, do your studies. <laughs> you know, I'm like, but I say, dad, you don't understand the black man and the black woman is suffering, man. Yeah. White supremacy, that's okay, but we're spending money on college. You don't have to. <laughs> It's okay, you know, it's okay, you don't have to be, it's not too, too much black, you know, it's okay, do your homework. <laughs> so I was that guy, I would go see, you know, I would go see black speakers. Right. I watched Stokely Carmichael came to our, you know, our, our, our university, we was, I was that dude. And then I started incorporating it in like holding court, I was talking about racism, but I'd be funny with it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I said, man, and this girl, and I want to give her a shout out. It was a girl, it was a rebound chick, because I broke up with the girl I was dating on campus. Okay. It's a rebound chick. I'm gonna give her props. Her name was Toya Dixon. I'm gonna I will never forget this. I always talked about, you know what, I should I should do some comedy. I should just doing the stand-up. And I remember one day I was just riffing, talking shit. She wrote everything down on a yellow piece of paper. Let you know, the little uh, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the what is it called? Legal. The legal, legal pad. Man. So she's writing all these jokes and shit. And I, and I woke up, I said, yo, what is all this? She goes, remember all, all the shit you were talking about yesterday was so funny. I wrote it all down. You should do this comedy thing. Wow. So from there, I said, when I get back to the city, cause you know, uh, Champaign Man. Urbana is a couple of, you know, it's a couple hours away from Chicago. I said, I'm going to go to the open mics. Right. And that's when, that's when that shit that's when the bug hit. The bug hit. And I remember that's when I met with my, my partner to right. do comedy solo and you know, a, com a comedy team. Then, you know, the whole thing. And right. it was, that's how pretty much it started, man. And I right. said, I want to do comedy because I'm different. And I've always been very different. I'm very, I'm original. I, I, I take pride in my originality. I take pride that, well, listen, here's the thing about being different. <laughs> when you're different, it's a longer road. 
<laughs> you see, because they can't put you in a box. But all my acting teachers say, don't let anybody put you in a box. Be amorphic. I go, this shit ain't working. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I always took pride in being different. When Did they say anything about be employed? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I, I'm not. Listen, I, I've done things, you know. Right. But I'm, I take pride in. You can see a bunch of comedians, right? Yes. See a whole, you go to a comedy show, you see a whole bunch of people, but a lot of times people are doing the same kind of shit. But one thing I took pride in for myself was that, bam, I said, this dude was different. He was, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I took pride in being, doing really smart shit. You know, that was my thing. Cause a lot of comedians that I know, and I'm not cracking, but a lot of comedians that I know that look like me, are way more intelligent than a lot of like, than what you see on stage. Right. A lot of them have degrees. A lot of them are engineers and all this other. And then they go up there doing this shit. I go, you're not even from that neighborhood. Why are what? you front? Be yourself. I always believed in being myself. One of the first places that I did start in was it also was the Cotton Club in Chicago. Real wow, quick. Okay. The Cotton Club, which Bernie Mac hosted mm -hmm. every Monday. Okay. And that was when when I first doing open mics, I was doing mainstream shit mainstream just you know everybody's there mainstream well they say the white rooms but mainstream so i said you know what i want to do some i want to do black shit i need to make sure i'm legit you know what i'm saying and they said well you need to go see bernie mac and i was at this little poetry recital i said i said bernie mac who's that he said he's on the south side you go to his his night on mondays he has a band and shit you go jimmy car wash spinks remember the car wash mm -hmm. Remember the guy that played Hippo, the big fat dude? Okay. Jimmy's from Chicago, yeah. too. And it was like, you got to go to their night. So I went and I said, let me go over there and see this Bernie Mac. Okay. Dude. So I went on Monday just to check it out. And I see this dark skinned dude with glasses. You know, I walk, when you walk in the cotton club, the stage is right there. Right. So you can get talked about. Mm -hmm. So you see Bernie with this big town. He's like, I'm sick and tired of being motherfucking sick and tired. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm tired of this shit. You know? Right. And I was like, who the fuck is that Bernie Mac? And so after he got off stage, I said, hey, Bernie, uh, he go, what's your name, man? What's your motherfucking name? I said, <laughs> it's God. He said, all right. I said, I'm, 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 I just started doing comedy. I was, like to, you know, I heard about your night. He said, okay, come next Monday, eight o'clock. You got five motherfucking minutes. Right? <laughs> and if you go in, if you go any further, the band go motherfucking play. I said, all right. So that's where I had my relationship with Bernie Mac the whole night. And Bernie was impressed by me because I was one of the first dudes imitating him. Right. D Ray. I was the first, I was one of the first dudes imitating him. And he said, the one thing I like about you, Godfrey, is you do that you, you, you're yourself. And in the cotton club, it was, Pimps, hustlers, Bishop Don Juan. Yes. He saw me when I first started. Bishop Don Juan from Chicago. Lisa Ray used to come through. Wow. Uh, the Bulls. Yes. It was, you see Michael Jordan, Ahmad Rashad. You see, yeah. So it was, a, it was a whole Chicago black elite. Yeah. And mm -hmm. yeah. So Bernie was like, you don't even change your, you don't even, you could do mainstream. You stay the same. I said, right. well, that's what I think is the best about comedy is being yourself and being right. true to yourself. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because real gangsters know if you fake. Right. They know. Right. You know what? I had cattle. Oh, obviously, you know I had cattle. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I asked, Can I see that? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I asked him, and it's yeah. funny that you say that. You yes. said mainstream, and then you say the black. So when you're in front of a, a black audience, yes. you do comedy one way. But if you're in front of a mainly white audience, do you change? No. And here's the thing about- You tell the same jokes. Man. And with black audiences, because there's so- I travel around the country. I've been a headliner for more than 15 years. And when I travel around the country, there's some cities where it's all black. Like right. if I'm in Cleveland, yeah, yeah. If I'm in uh uh, uh, uh right. Baltimore, yeah, it's black. But I still do the same. But the thing about talking about race, because I'm a race guy, mm -hmm. I love going in. Even all, all white audiences, I go in. Mm -hmm. I don't go, hey man, it's racism. We need to stop that shit. I go, nah. Let me tell you about you guys. Let me tell you about your little microaggressions. Yeah, you know, I go in, but it's a craft. Right. If you can craft it. You, right. I do Trump Trump support. I do I do the South. Right. Trump support. And I'm talking right. about right. fucking hillbilly motherfuckers. You know, you you from the South. Right, of course I you seen them southerners, the mouth don't move. What yeah. t-shirt right now? <laughs> Man, <that> hill, <laughs> yeah, and he dying right there. Where they fucking them up. Right. Yeah, they fuck with me. But right. it depends on how you it depends on how you navigate the joke. Right. You know, I never change. Black people just make you more loose. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because you're in front of your people, you know. your people, but but, yeah, you, but, but you got to be funny because they're going to let you know if you're not oh, funny. Oh, no, no, no. Funny is funny. Yeah. And there's people who are the ghetto comics that aren't funny. Right. 
and there's the intelligent ones that are funny. The, it, it depends on the person. Funny is funny. I don't give a fuck what you're doing. Right. Juggling, whatever. Right. Funny is funny. So I never change my shit. And one thing about I know about black audiences, they like it if you're keeping it real, you from the other boat, but they like it when you're talking about that pro-black shit, too. Oh, yeah. They sure. like both of that. Because mm -hmm. whenever I'm talking about it, that you hear people like, preach, dog. That's what I'm talking about. Hell yeah. <laughs> you see? Yes. You see what I'm saying? So I got... So I'm, I, I'm able to craft that because I really, I am a, a, a student of the game. Mm -hmm. I'm a student of comedy. I don't, I, I really study the people that have been before me. Mm -hmm. I am white, black. I know my comedy history. You know what I'm saying? So that's very important. And I like to be intelligent on stage. I like, I'm the kind of comic that doesn't use the N word because we had a debate about that. Okay. You know, about there's comics I see, you know, that it'll be a majority audience that don't look like us. Right. And they'll use that word over and over. And I right. go, are these people laughing because the joke is funny? Or are they laughing because nigga is funny? Right. Because nigga is, let's be for real. Phonetically, it's a great, it's a funny word. God damn, that word is funny. It's the top. It's the Nike of racial slurs. Yes. <laughs> you know, like nigga is the top. Like spick. Just don't say it. The, I, yeah. <laughs> spick, spick can... Chink, those are like Adidas, Reebok, but nigga. Like, if I watch this joke, if I say, man, here come this bald head ass nigga, hilarious. Right. Here come this bald head ass brother. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's a little, ah, it's a yeah. little, tie -ah. It's a little spice on that, right? Right. And I, and I, and I had, a, we had a debate about that. I said, well, why do you use the word? Why do you use that word in front of people when you're really not like that? I understand cats that are like that. Like Cat Williams, when he does it, 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 it matches. It's, you he talk like that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> it's certain people that you go, yeah, yeah I get that. Right. But there's some other cats right. that I go, yo, you're not even like that. But you, when you get in front of a certain audience, you use it in front of them. I don't know if it's irresponsible. Listen, I'm not telling anybody how to do comedy, right. but I just feel weird doing it. Right. I don't even use it in front of black audiences. Okay. okay. You know? Yeah. yeah. But for me, this is my style. This is my style. But when I do use the word, the N word, I, I'm, I'm making a point about the N word. Okay. Because I have a joke about the double G words. Right. You know what I mean? Double G words. Something about the double G word. Like, you got the N word. You got the F word. Two mm -hmm. Gs. Yeah. And if you know Harry Potter, you ever know about Harry Potter? I'm a Harry Potter fan. No, I ain't. I ain't. Where there's a muggle. They call him a muggle. Okay. That means he ain't a real... He's a half prince. He's okay. some bullshit. Okay. So they call him. They say, you're a muggle, Harry Potter. And they, it's almost like saying that... <laughs> Right. When you're watching Harry Potter, you're like, is he talking to me? Right. Oh, Harry Potter's a muggle. Can you believe that? You're a muggle, Harry Potter. <laughs> and I'm like, this is he calling me a nigga? You know yes. what I'm saying? So I, I talk about the phonetic. I'm into words because I'm a big George Carlin fan. Okay. Big Carlin fan, big Pryor fan. And there were, it's all wordplay for me. You know, I'm, I'm really into the art form of this shit. So yeah, the N word thing is, you know, that's just for me. Right. I'm not telling anybody how to do comedy. Right. I don't want anybody to conflate this shit, right. but that's, I'm very, I just want to know why people use it. Someone told me, well, I don't want them to, I don't, I want to, I don't, I feel comfortable saying it because I'm not going to let them determine, you know, how I say the word. I'm not, I'm taking the word back. I said, that was never your word. Right. What do you mean you taking it back? They gave it to you. Right. You know what I'm saying? So if I'm, it desensitizes the word. Really? So when they call you the name out of, out of vitriol, mm -hmm. then you react to it. You get mad. So how is it desensitizing you? Right. I'm just saying, if it, if, if someone calls you the name, you shouldn't even flinch. You go, I say it so much, it doesn't even bother me, but it still stings. Mm -hmm. That's all. It's just a debate we're still yeah. having with the N-word. Yeah. Get in on the action with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. New customers who deposit $5 or more can get no sweat bet up to $1,000 back in bonus bets. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code SHANNON. New customers can get a no sweat bet up to $1,000 if your first bet loses. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code SHANNON. Crown is yours. When you did Steve Harvey, <laughs> did you did you know yeah. it was gonna be as funny as it was? And I read that he wasn't too enthused about it. Because, like you said, he gave you some great advice early, and yeah. then you turn around years later. Let me and then you, let me let me, let me, yeah, yeah, yeah. let me get some of this cognac. <laughs> Ooh, boy, Shady boy, you you made you tough, man. Ah, that cognac, good boy. I'm gonna tell you right now. That cognac good. Like my grandmama said, if you ain't gonna drink cognac, better get that Hennessy. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Steve Harvey met him like when Cat called it a man unit. Yeah. Oh, that was fucking funny. God. It, um, I remember when Steve Harvey had hair and it was kind of, you know, thinning. Yeah. And I was in the hallway and I was mad about something. I think we opened up for Steve Harvey. And Steve goes, he goes, yo, what's the matter with you? I said, ah, oh, man, my, my partner, he's not really doing the lines. He's fucking up the shit. And Steve goes, how much you getting for this gig? I said, um, we're getting like $100. He goes, so that means you splitting it. I said, yeah. He said, are you trying to split in that shit? I said, yeah. He goes, cut his ass. And he left. <laughs> and that's when I went solo because of Steve Harvey. Right. Fast forward to now. Fast forward to about four years ago. Right. I'm on my podcast, by the way, in Godfrey We Trust on the Gas Digital Network. Um, so my the guy that I was co-hosting with, he was like, he said something. He answered a question real fast. Like he right. got frantic. And I said, damn, this ain't the family feud. And I was like, yeah. What's your ass say? I said, your dumb ass going to answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I did it on some bullshit. Right. And then the next day, everybody said, your shit is going viral. I said, what? He said, that's Steve Harvey shit you did? I said, oh, I didn't know. So then, like, all the comics were calling me. Jay Farrell's go, yo, man, I did not know you had a Steve Harvey. I go, don't you have a Steve Harvey? I thought everybody does Steve Harvey. They say, no, you're the only one doing Steve Harvey. Mm -hmm. So it went, kept going viral. And Steve sent me a text. He goes, boy, when I see you, I'm going to beat your ass. <laughs> I could just hear his voice in the text. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you got me fucked up, boy. I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm from Cleveland. I don't know you know me. Steve, I hope you see this imitation. Because, yeah. Boy, <laughs> and his hand, I got the yeah, oh, you, you, you got the mannerisms. He said, I'm going to tell you, God has blessed me. See, I was sleeping in my car. I had no damn money. <laughs> but now I got money, boy. I'm going to find your ass. <laughs> and, so, I, and people say, I think Steve is... <laughs> you ain't trying to laugh too hard. No, you no, 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 because, because when, I first, <laughs> when I first heard it, like I yeah. said... If it sounds like that yeah. person to your ear, yeah. that's a real good imitation. Be and when you're doing it, yes. now I, I guarantee you, if you were to ask Steve, Steve will say Steve. to his ear, it sounds like him speaking. Because he does with his W's, why? Now, where, where am I going to find that? You're going to say I had a wig. I had no damn wig. That was, where in the world would I have a wig? And why? <laughs> you got me fucked up. Where, where, wherever I see you, I'm gonna wear your ass have out, you, boy. Have you Survey ever done said. that? Have you ever done that in front of him? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Top five answers on the board. Here's the question. Survey said. Name something Steve fit to do to Godfrey when he see his ass. <laughs> Whoop his ass. Number one answer, boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got the we got the Harvey's and Godfrey. Let's play the. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, you know, and, and I just kept perfecting. I would watch one day I was on the road and you know how family feud, sometimes the cable be trash in a hotel and it was just family feud for three hours. I was like, I ain't got shit to do. Right. Let me watch Steve Harvey because he's so good at, he's fantastic he's at the family feud. Bro. He, t remember we had Richard Dawson. We had yeah, a whole yeah, bunch of people yeah. hosted. Man, I said, yo, this is so fun. Richard Dawson kissed everybody in the mouth. Man, he kissed. He licked. One yeah. He was like, how you doing, love? <laughs> <laughs> Top five answers on the board. <laughs> Here's the question. <laughs> He's like, how you doing, love? Is this your grandmother? Uh, hey, what's your answer? All right. <laughs> he went, he went tough. <laughs> yeah. He was a smooth mo. I don't know if people remember Richard Dawson. But Richard was Dawson was the white dude from Hogan's Heroes. Heroes. Hogan's Heroes. Yeah. And he would kiss. He's like, how you doing, love? It? Yeah. You had that long, that long ass bite. <laughs> <laughs> like the Bob Barker joint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, um, so Steve, like, um, what was I going to say? Steve is so good at it. I was watching for hours and I said, damn, look at what he does. And so, you know, he's always joking. Right. Steve don't let shit go. Right. So you can be like, uh, name an animal that, you know, you have in the house. You say, I'll say dog. What your ass say? <laughs> dog. <laughs> he said dog. Yeah. And he'd go to the audience, go mm -hmm. out there. So I was like, look at, he does this. Right. He goes, he said dog. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I ain't never heard. I was like, I said, he keeps doing that. I go, okay. So I started going, yeah, yeah, yo, and the, yeah. And I said, I think I got it. And in your, in your head, you're, you're like, I think I got it. Right. And so people are like, Joe, you got that shit. You know, it's like, 
It was like with Trump, same thing with Trump. I was watching Trump and I, I, I turned off the volume and I just saw his mouth, it's very tiny. Very big head. Yeah. This is a very good show, very good show, Shannon Sharp. One of my favorite shows that I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, sh uh, Club Shasha. <laughs> <laughs> Very good show, Club Shawshank, whatever you call it. I've watched millions and millions of shows, and this one is perfect, perfect. I don't watch a lot of black shows, but this one, better than Jimmy Kimmel, better than any other Joe Rogan, there are pieces of shit, but this one is top. <laughs> one of the greatest, I love this show, I watch it all the time. I think I'll get more views than Cat Williams. <laughs> so did you stumble upon, up like, you like, did you, do you stumble upon them or do you just try and practice? I just stumble. I'll look at stuff and I'll go, hmm. I'll look and say, I think I could do this dude. You know what I mean? I'll right. just look and go, that might be a good one. Trump, who doesn't want to have a Trump? Right. And, and, and to do Trump, I'll do Trump in front of like Republican audiences. Right. It's neutralizing. Cause I'm not hating him or I'm just saying, man, Trump makes me laugh. Right. You know, Trump, the, you know, Trump has a ceiling of intelligence. When he hits his ceiling, he goes high school on you. Right. You know, if you bring up something, Donald, let me tell you something, Donald. You don't understand the, the oil crisis in 1978. It was, uh, um, prices of oil were $10 a barrel and tr Trump would go, and then Trump don't notice it. He'd be like, this guy's a piece of shit. You always, he's trying to be a tough guy. I don't, I never liked you. Your wife's a crisis. <laughs> Your wife's a crisis. You're a piece of shit. I know oil, lots of oil. Yeah. Olive oil, vegetable oil. <laughs> <laughs> so he would, you know, yeah. so I just started to get it and I started getting, I started watching him more and he's New York. He's from New York. Right. So when he goes, I talk to him, there's that accent. I say, right. I hear that. I talked to him the other day. So he's still got to put the New York thing in right. there. So there's little nuances I catch. How, how important are the mannerisms? Because when you do Steve Harvey, you do all of his mannerisms. Yeah. When you do Trump, you do the mannerisms. Yes. You have really honed in on that aspect. Yeah, of you it. have to, you have to, you, mannerisms count because it's the person you're being the person. It's Correct. like as an actor, you're being the person. Like if you do prior, shit, goddamn, you niggas is crazy, Jack. I love your show, shit. <laughs> I'm watching that shit like a motherfucker, Jack. Yeah. I bet you get a lot of white bitches, don't you, Jack? Yeah. Dan and Shaw, my motherfucker. Where's the coke? <laughs> no, yeah. but you know, I, I, Richard was this guy. Yeah, he was. Richard was shit. God damn. He was that guy right. doing this and the hands. So you just can't. I mean, Cosby was like, you see, when I worked for Cosby, by the way, I worked for Cosby for six months. I was audience coordinator for his second sitcom on CBS. Okay. And so I was there when his son was killed. I was there. I lived in Queens and it was Kaufman Astoria Studios where they shot. It's right next door to Sesame Street. Okay. You remember that famous song? Can you tell me how to get? Yes. How to get to Sesame Street. Mm -hmm. Just to see Shannon Sharp know Sesame Street. I do. Right? You think of Everybody grew like up him. on Sesame Street. Of course, Street. of course. <laughs> I can just see you singing. Can you tell me how to get, how to get to Sesame Street? <laughs> do... Come and. Come on, sing it. I want to see a big dude singing. <laughs> Come and play. Everything's A-OK. -okay. <laughs> I love Sesame Street, man. I'm, I'm going to tell you this right now. Sesame Street's my favorite. My grandmother said, what she say? <laughs> if you don't know how to get to Sesame Street, I'm going to show your ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, so when I was there, I remember to watch Cosby every, to watch him every Thursday, mm -hmm. like to do the sitcom with Dougie Doug, Madeline Kahn. I was there. I was introduced. I would introduce Felicia Rashad. I was the audience coordinator. Right. But I had to tell jokes to 250 people right. for eight hours. Right. Eight hours, I'm just talking. I had to be clean, no singing, no nothing. You ask a question, but you gotta keep joking. Right. When the lights come on, you show them, talk. Oh man. And I remember one day, um, I walked into Cosby's office because you could just walk in and say, what's up? So I was like, Hey, Dr. Cosby, how you doing? You know, he's like, Hey, and he had the cigar. I'm not bullshitting you. It was the Cosby esque. Yeah. And he goes, Hey, how you doing, man? How you doing? And I said, hey, could you give me some advice? I'm doing comedy four years. I said, can you right. give me some advice on, you know, on comedy? I didn't know what to right. say to him. He goes, and I'm not bull. He goes, writing. You got to write, son. You got to put it on the paper. Writing is the backbone. Oh, and I, that's him. He's, right. and you got to see, and Sinbad, boy, that's the bad. He loves Sinbad. First right. of all, Sinbad is recovering. Yeah, yeah, to you. Sinbad's recovering. Yeah. 
And I hope you can Listen, get him on here because yes. he is, we cannot forget Sinbad. Mm -hmm. Sinbad is like, for real, like one of the greatest comedians that we we tend to ignore. Right. One of the greatest, some of the greatest HBO specials. Mm -hmm. Sinbad, thank you for, he's recovering, he's getting better, yes. he's speaking well. But yeah, but that's how I imitated people. If I'm around you long enough, right. I can start doing you. Right. The, one, of, a, a comic, one of my comic colleagues that I started imitating was Dion Cole. Really? De oh, yeah. Dion Cole, when we were in Chicago, he'd be like, yo, man, you sound just like me. I would do <laughs> Dion. Yo, you ever understand, man, how you do that shit? <laughs> so, I started, so I started imitating my friends so I could just, if I hear it and it's in my range, I go, I think I can do it. You know what right. I'm saying? So that's where, yeah. The Trump sneakers. Trump is selling sneakers. <laughs> you get a pair? Black people love sneakers. <laughs> and let me tell you something. I released it because I'm a genius. I released it during Black History Month. Perfect month for black people. <laughs> I didn't get the sneakers. But they weren't that bad looking. I go front. Right. They were they just painted them. They were just simple. I've had shoe sneakers like that, but they just painted them as Trump pushing right. them. I don't even think they're made. I think they're pre-ordered. I don't think they're even completed. Right. You know what I'm saying? I think it's bullshit. Did you get some? No. No, I did not. Better than your sneakers, Shasha. <laughs> Way better. So what do you think his chances are winning? I think they're... He's brilliant. trying to do something that only Grover Cleveland has ever done. Hold the office, lose the office, uh, win it back. Ah, uh, sort of like Michael Jordan. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But I think he might win it. I, th he, I Listen, man, he won the first time we thought, hell no. He no chance. Win. And he he might he might win. Look at He has 8,000 felonies. 8,000 felonies. And this motherfucker has a chance. I think Biden just... Right, he just got the Democratic yes. nod. Yes, I don't even know if he knows, but he, he got. <laughs> I got the nod. Come on. Yeah, I got the nod. Yeah. I don't think they're gonna <laughs> estimate. I don't think they're. I don't think people are <laughs> underestimating former President Trump like they did in 2016 because they, he's held the office, so you know he's capable of holding it again. And the thing about Trump is he never stays out of the public. He's always still connecting to it. Whether it's some bullshit, he's always in their presence. Mm -hmm. Trump is always present. Right. I think about Trump. I'll say, what is Trump doing right now? Right. I'll think about Trump. And he's just, he's a businessman. He's all about being in front of people. He wants you to say his name. That's one thing about business people. They want you, to, whether it's bad or good, just say my name. Right. Trump. I don't give a damn if you hate me, but the one thing Trump has a weakness of, of is not paying attention to him. If you're indifferent, that's his weakness. But if you go, fuck you, Trump, he's like, these are great people. <laughs> yeah. He's like Thanos. Yeah. The more you hate him, the stronger he gets. You right. know what I'm saying? So I, he might have, he might win it. I don't know. You know how this country right. gets? Of course. You know when the good old boys go, God damn, me. <laughs> we gonna make you, he did We gonna make it great again. He's like, you gotta make this goddamn good and get great again. <laughs> but you said Denzel, you like to see Denzel run for president. <laughs> you think Denzel will make a great president? Run for president. God, I can see him. All right. All right. So we're going to run for president, right? Huh? The economy. What are we going to do with the economy? Huh? Yeah. We're going to lower the, <laughs> we'll lower the taxes. We're going to lower what? The taxes. All right. Yeah. We're going to lower the tax. What else are we going to do? Gun control. Right? Yeah. Gun <laughs> I can see Denzel running for president. <laughs> the Rock. Steph Curry even mentioned the other morning. I think the other morning he was on a, a, a morning talk show and he was talking about potentially once his career is over. Steph Curry. Steph Curry. He said, maybe not the president, but politics, because he I wants to see him as an alderman. What? Steph as an alderman, what? not a I, senator. Oh, good. Senator Curry. Yeah, I could see him first as like an alder, you know, just like a, a councilman, like a city a local, council. local guy first. Uh, you, you think he's going to go for Senate? Why not? No, no. Because no. you look at look at I'm Arnold not he, and uh, 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 who's that? Arnold went for governor, yeah. Clint, Clint Eastwood, Jesse Ventura. Oh, that's on Jesse the Body Ventura. That's right. I was governor. I remember the time I was governor. See, I could yeah. kind of do him, yeah. yeah. And Arnold's like, yeah, I, of course, I had, I wanted to be president, but I wasn't born here. Right. But I could have, I could have done anything. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> no. Shannon Sharp, this is a good show. I like you work hard. You work hard. Your muscles look perfect. They're not as good as mine at the time, but it's like, I'm still, I'm like 75. Uh, and look at me. My muscles are better than yours. I don't know. It's weird. What about The Rock? 
We think rock because rock. rock rock has universal appeal. I mean, they, he does. And, and, but everybody here loves him. He's so positive. He God, is. I feel like he's gonna snap one day. My the rock is always positive. I just want to tell you guys, I'm very happy. Um, my vodka's doing really well. And uh, the people, all the people around here have been very positive to me. He's very, very, very positive. positive. I, he could rock it, definitely run. I mean, when you're like that much, would you run? How about you? Ooh, dude. You wouldn't run for something? <laughs> see, sports, Shannon, see, here's on. the thing, though, Godfrey. Sports <laughs> journalists, they trying to find stories for sports. Them investigative yeah. and the political journalists, yeah. they going back and talking to people. Oh, shit. They dig it. See, yeah. And I ain't got no skeletons in the closet. I got a graveyard. Yeah. <laughs> Leave that alone. Leave that alone. Leave so you wouldn't run for shit, Ooh, huh? Nah. I walk Can't gracefully. Can't you I see can't your run. picture? Mm-mm. Political picture? Like, mm-mm. mm-mm. <laughs> no. Hell nah. <laughs> leave well enough for law, but leave the past in the past. I'm, I'm, tell you, I'm black and mild. Come on. <laughs> Vote for me, Shannon Shaw. What about Aaron Rodgers? Aaron Rodgers, you know, he might be on the ticket with, uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Come on, man. Aaron Rodgers. I don't, I don't know. Aaron, that's, he's not, that, if he goes, if Robert Kennedy Jr. runs with Aaron Rodgers, this shit ain't going to work. It's not going to work. Aaron Rodgers is already up in boiling, right? It's the people, he's been saying a lot of crazy shit, yeah. which is his business. Right. I love Aaron Rodgers, but, you know, he's been saying too much. I don't think he's going to win. I, see, I think once you run for a politician, then all you, they start to get bullshit on you. They yeah. start to, you know what I mean? Yeah. They start doing bullshit on you. They start calling, oh, you did this back in 19, yeah, fuck yeah. all that. Yeah. I, I'm not doing that shit. See? I would never do that. And shit. now you talking about you want me to I run. would never run. Hell no. Nah. Not your damn mind. What's your favorite impression to do? Of all the impressions shit. that you can do, <sighs> oh. what's your favorite, your, what's your most favorite to do? Trump is very fun. Trump is fun because he's so polarizing. Um, um, Statham, Jason Statham, I like to do. Really? Yeah. I liked, I did Statham for Statham on YouTube. It's on, I was on this show, Opie and Jim, uh, uh, Opie and Jim, before it was Opie and Anthony, Opie and Jim Norton. And I did, Jason Statham was on the show and I did it for him. So I, I like doing Jason Statham. What, what did you think? He liked it. He's like, wow, you do me better than me. That's pretty good. I like that. <laughs> yeah, son. Yeah, yeah you, did did I did, I you did it. You did it. You did it. He's like, I like Shannon Sharp. I like watching uh, Club Shay Shay. It's pretty nice. <laughs> yeah, bitch. What? Yeah, come get some. So, I don't know why I did that. So, like, when I was growing up, the 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 master of impersonation was Rich Little. Was Rich Little? Nobody. I mean, yeah. there was not it. I mean, he just like yes, and he just go in. Did hundreds of them. Yes. Yeah. Did you study Rich? I I watched him on a lot of TV shows. And he would do like a lot of presidents and yes. stuff like that. And I did a show with him during COVID in Vegas. I, he was right before me. He's 82 at mm-hmm. the time and he was doing his impersonations, but old school impersonations yeah. for the older crowd. Yeah. But yeah, I watched Rich do it. You know, I watched him do it because we would always look for, he was the only guy really doing it. Yes. But also Frank Gorshin, the guy who played the Riddler on Batman okay. was a good impersonator. Mm-hmm. Um, George Kirby, see, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm a history buff in comedy. George Kirby, black comedian from Chicago, could imitate. He could sing like, um, what's her name? Uh, Ella Fitzgerald. Okay. He could switch his voice. George Kirby, underrated comedian from the past. But yeah, I would watch a lot of those guys. Yeah. I ask people, especially comedians, to come in here and give me their uh-huh. Mount Rushmore. Oh, gosh. Yeah. And they named seven people. You do understand that like, Mount Rushmore has four heads. Yeah, but it's just... Okay, go ahead. And a lot of times what I've been getting... Yes. ...is that current comedian says, I can't name somebody from my generation because I'm with them. With I them, right. right. So if I said, okay, give me your... Your, give me Godfrey's four okay. be- best comedians. It's usually... Your four best or should be the people that you watch the most. Like you watch video on them the most. And I got Pryor, Carlin, Red Fox, and Paul Mooney. Right. I watch them all the time. And Paul Mooney, oh my God. I, I think Paul Mooney doesn't get the respect that he deserves, you know, mm-hmm. cause he wrote for Richard Pryor. He right. wrote, a, he wrote for Living Color. Right. Homie the Clown. That was Paul Mooney. He wrote for even the Chappelle show. Wow. I love Paul Mooney. I watch a lot of Paul Mooney. Okay. And I wish Paul Mooney were alive to come on this show. He'd be like, Shannon, this is a very good show. Very, you're He's, brilliant. You're brilliant. You're brilliant. But niggas don't like you. <laughs> niggas, Shannon Sharp, you a big motherfucker, and you, you will kick a nigga's ass. You didn't put Pryor up there. 
I did. You put pride. Murphy, that's who you left. No, Murphy, see, I think Mur Eddie Murphy, oh, of course he's a hero of mine. One of the greatest comedic actors. Nobody's fucked right. with Eddie Murphy on the comedy and movies. Right. And you can match any, but there's a lot of funny people, but Eddie Murphy right. is the best. We, I just, I don't think I've seen Eddie Murphy enough as far okay. as specials and mm -hmm. stuff. Okay. But Eddie is up there. Well, well, what? Well, you said top four. That's bullshit. It should be top five. Eddie, look, put up Eddie. Mount Rushmore. Mount, okay. Who your forehead you gonna put on? My well, those are presidents that should have no business up there. Well, we got comedians up there. We're going to put the comedians up there. All right. I just gave you Red Fox. Red my Fox. Red Fox ain't bad. Yeah. Thank you very much. Right. I, I really like your, your show. It's very good. I watch it all the time. How you doing, sir? Yeah. Anyway, this is Red Fox, and I'm very happy to be on Club Shay Shay. You, you not like, a lot of niggas got a podcast. You got you like you like uh, uh, George Carlin. What is it about Love Car George what Carlin? What is it about Carlin? His wordplay. It's his wordplay. It's his, it's his, his intelligence and how he puts words together. And, and listen, everybody has a taste. And Carlin was never lazy with a joke. He always, because he grew up, his parents were advertising people. His mom and dad were good with words. And he was always, it's his joke writing. It's mm -hmm. just the wordplay. He loved using different words. And so I was like, that's made me focus on words because comedy is an art form of words, right. syntax. It's about how you say it. Some people, some, I see some jokes and like, even for myself, I'm hard on myself. If I see a joke and it's too lazy, I go, mm -mm, it could be better than that. Right. And I watch Carl and I go, damn, even if the joke wasn't that funny to you, but the work he put in it, you go, God damn, that was brilliant. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's like, uh, it's his wordplay. And the things that he says about society, yes. calling out white supremacy. A white guy saying it to white yeah. people is right. very important. Yes. An Irish guy from Harlem, it's important that this white guy is saying, you know, y'all ain't shit. You feel me? Has someone, ever, have you ever heard a joke? Yeah. And you're like, I could have done that joke better. Yes. And then there's some jokes where I go, damn, he got that. That's the best. Or she got that. That was the best take I've seen. I've seen somewhere I could, damn, I could have done that better. Damn, I wish I had that joke. Right. That was perfect. Yeah, of course. A lot of many times you do. So can you do Chappelle? <laughs> yeah, see, I'm going to tell you something, man. This is great. This is great. I love being on Club Shay Shay, bitch. Man, <laughs> I love it. He's like, and, and Chappelle I've known for since 97, 96, 97. And Chappelle is one of the greatest, but everybody does a Chappelle. So you have to sort of talk like this. Right. And now his voice is a little, you know, I'm, listen, I'm not transphobic. I'm not. I have friends. I have friends. I have a lot of trans friends. And you remember when he got, um, he got, uh, I guess they blocked his show in Minnesota. Right. And at a theater, they were like, the trans community came. Yeah. They blocked his show. And then he went to another theater about 20 minutes later and sold that out. Right. He's like, I, I'm, I'm trans. I feel I'm trans because I transferred from one theater to another. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a great transaction, bitch. <laughs> I hear, when I hear people talk about him. Yes. It's like, there's like, he was a prodigy. He yeah. started at a very, very young 14. age. Like, but a lot of comedians don't start until they're in the later twenties, mid twenties. Yeah, I started he, after college, twenty two. So here's a guy that's fourteen, and they're saying he's going to these clubs yeah. where adults yeah. perform. Yeah, and so you knew him. Did you know he was going to become this? No, I didn't. I heard about him. Well, actually, when I first got to New York City, one of my first shows was was with him on the show. It was with him on the show. And he was, uh, I heard his name, Dave right. Chappelle, Dave Chappelle, because he did, uh, he had done, uh, Star Search. Yes. Um, young and, and even Ed McMahon said, that guy's going to be a star. Right. Watch. And people uh, don't remember Star Search. I, and Ed McMahon before American Idol. Yeah. It was Star Search. Four, four stars. Four stars. Three stars. Yep. Sinbad came from there. Martin Lord. A lot of people that mm -hmm. are stars came from there. And I heard about him. I heard about him. Then I was ended up on a show with him. Mm hmm. I think I had to f go after him. He murdered. I had to go after him. But I heard about him and I knew, okay, this guy is something to watch because everybody, Chappelle, Chappelle, Chappelle. Mm -hmm. And, and I guess a guy, I want to give credit to Tony Woods, who is a, who Chappelle, he took Chappelle under his wing in DC. Tony Woods is another underrated comedian who's fantastic. Um, yeah. So Chappelle, I knew Chappelle was going to be, I didn't know how big until that Chappelle show. I didn't right. know he was going to be like, right. Woo, I mean, he's mad, like right. massive. You I know? mean, cause I, you see him in, uh, um, Nutty Professor. He's Reggie. Killed that. And shit. then you see him in Blue Street. Yeah. Uh, and you like, man, dude is, he's amazing.
And his comedy, he's an amazing comedian because he loves, I think he loves comedy more than anything. I believe so. Because he puts the time in. He puts the hours in. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you this. I think you had a guest on here mm -hmm. that I disagreed with. Okay. No, and this is no, I, you know, I, you know, I would love to start beef because I want this to go to 60 million. <laughs> I want to call somebody out. I just want to fucking start some shit, but I won't do that. You know what I'm saying? Damn. <laughs> um, but when okay. Country Wayne was on here, yeah. I, first of all, I don't know Country Wayne at all. Right. But I watched his video. I, I give him his credit for him making all that money. I was listening to him like, oh, what? how did you do this? Right. You know, I love his hustle. Smart dude. I mean, he making millions off of this shit. Right. I wish I, I could. But he said one statement that I disagreed with, Country. I disagreed with you. What was the statement? I, I think he said, and if I'm wrong, you correct me. Okay. Said something about... If anybody's in a comedy club still, that means you're not doing anything. Something like that mm -hmm. to that. I don't know if he okay. was answering Faison. Right. I think it was him and Faison right. going at it. Because okay. Faison's my dude. Right. Faison. Faison. Go, everybody be going at Faison. I love Faison. Goes to everybody else. He's funny. Faison's a funny son of a bitch. Mm -hmm. But he's saying if you're still in the comedy clubs, right. you're not a real comedian. I right. think he said that. Am okay. I wrong? Something to that effect. And I go, but I think he was talking about him. Because, okay, like, please, because I was like, you are wrong right. about that shit. Right. I'm in the comedy clubs. DL's in the com comedy clubs are still being built. They're not fading away. Right. If you do theaters, that's like a blessing. Right. But theaters are multi-purpose rooms. Right. Comedy clubs usually are just for comedy. Co comedians of all statures right. do comedy clubs. There's the rare moments you have. This, you know, Chappelle still comes to comedy clubs and works on his shit. Right. Seinfeld, who's a billionaire, still comes to the comedy club. But I think what he was, what I, I'm, was, I'm just saying, yeah. I might be, I might be in no, misinterpreting. I think this. what he was saying yeah. is that that's his only choice is to do those. The people that you mentioned can do arenas, they can do theaters. Yeah, he's saying that he probably the only thing he can do. Okay, is I'm like shit. Right. I'm, so what does that make me? Because no, it's no, no, not no, easy. No, no. First of all, it's not easy to fill a comedy club. Mm -hmm. Even if it's a 300 seater, 400 seater, it's not easy. Right. Like there's people who have been fortunate, especially with the algorithm. You get the algorithm, you got 8 million followers. Yeah. Just numerically, you're going to fill the shit up. Right. But are you going to put the work in? Are you going to have the performance that, that, that keeps up with, it. to match it? Which comedy, I'm going to tell you this. And even Kat said it. You got to, you can't cheat comedy, man. I'm telling you. I, when I first got to New York, you know how many shows I was doing per week? 40 shows a week. 40? You heard what I said. 40, dog. Give me some cognac. Shit. Hello. Let me get that cognac. Come on, man. Get that cognac. Shit. Hold on, God. Get that shit. Hell yeah. There's only ah, seven. Really? Okay. Godfrey, there's get only that. seven days. Uh, yeah. Mm. So, you, ah. you do it. Isn't that how y'all? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How are you doing 40 shows in a week? Let me show you. So, a new, when I got to New York City, I remember it was a Tracy Morgan and some other cats. And they were like, yo, I said, hey, because in Chicago, we would do, you give them out six or seven shows a week. Yeah. Maybe, seven. What are they? And I got, <laughs> I got to New York. I did a show with, uh, I was in Harlem. I did one show. They was like, yo, we about to go. I said, we all going now. Yo, this show's in Brooklyn. Are you coming? You got more shows? Hell yeah. Boom. I hit about five stages. That same night. And I said, this is how y'all do it? It's like, hey, oh, yeah, we do multiple. The average comedian in New York, and I don't know if this is perfect math, does about between four to seven shows a night. Stage time. We got a lot of stages. We got a lot. Shout out to the Comedy Cellar. That's my spot. Comedy Cellar in New York City. But I was doing five shows a night. Wow. About five shows a night on the weekdays. Then on the weekends, I do a eight or nine. Eight or nine shows. Yeah, it would be me, Patrice O'Neill, Bill Burr, you know, Keith Robinson. It was all of us. Wanda Sykes. Wanda Sykes Hall. That's when I knew girl. Wanda Sykes Hall. That's my girl. Yeah, Wanda's, Wanda's the best. But we were, that's how you did it. You just ran all over the city and, did, and there was sometimes there'd be a club down the block. So you can go on stage there. You go over there, hit that. Yeah. So I would start at about 7 a.m. at 7 p.m. and then end at around 3 a.m. So I was doing comedy, and this is consistent. There's no breaks. This is consistent shit. Comedy takes that much work. It's really a sport. It's a sport. 
You got to go out there and you got to put the reps in. Is period. That, you can't cheat it. I don't give a fuck who you are. You can't cheat it. Is that how you get good at the craft? You goddamn right. And then you and you know what's funny is when you're on stage, they see the difference. They see the difference. They see the wordplay. They see the transition. You get those nuances as you stay on stage a lot. You have to. Right. I don't know. Somebody told me it was a young comic say, no, one day they're going to be able to skip steps in comedy. I said, just because you get on a TV show faster than a veteran don't mean you're good at it because I'm not trying to be an asshole, but a lot of these companies are skipping a lot of co comedians that are ready. There's a lot of, because people ask me, where are you getting your next uh, Netflix brother? I said, they don't really approach me. They don't really approach a lot, not just me, but they don't approach a lot of us. They, they've they been giving specials to people that don't even have an hour. You can tell somebody ain't ready by the way they edit it. You go, oh, that motherfucker started bombing at 15 minutes. That motherfucker started bombing at 20. They're not, because comedy oh, okay. takes, yeah, you have to be ready. You have to put your time in. And the people that are ready are like, hey, I'm ready for a special. They're not, that's why a lot of people are, Putting their shit up on, um, net, on, I'm sorry, YouTube. YouTube. Example, Ali Sadiq. If you ain't watched Domino Effect, you're out of your damn mind. Domino Effect one, two, and three. He just put three. He's all on, it's all on YouTube. Right. It's all on YouTube. His guy has been ignored. He had a chance to, he's been ignored, but he's putting it, you're counting on yourself. You got Andrew Schultz. There's Shane Gillis. There's a whole bunch of guys putting shit up on YouTube. That's what I'm going to have to do. Oh, and by the way, Shannon, I'm starting a GoFundMe. Yeah, that's right. I'm starting to go fund me to raise money to do my own special. Yes. Man, I'm not going to bullshit. What? Why, you bull why, why, why am I bull jiving? I'm not bull jiving. I'm raising money. Listen, go fund me. Go to GoFundMe Godfrey Special. I'm raising money. For real. I'm taking donations. No different than a church and a preacher. I'm taking donations because Jesus wants it. Ah! But yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm raising my own money. I've been offered some money because listen, to do a special, it's a big, it's budgets. You can go from 100,000 to 200,000. It depends. Right. Netflix pays for all that. Right. Oh, uh, Amazon pays for all that. But if they're not coming to me and coming to some other, uh, some of the other people, I gotta, I'm, I gotta raise I gotta money put, on my I own. I gotta put it up. Yes. And then it'll be mine and I can own it. You know what I'm saying? Right. I don't know. But so that's what's going on. There's a lot of comedians, men and women that are being ignored. I got, you got great comedians like Yamanika Sanders. You got Marina Franklin. You got a lot of great people. My man, Dante Nero. You got Ruben Paul. You got a lot of great comedians. Tony Rock. You got a lot of great comedians that are really putting in the work and are ready to do one, two, three. Let's go. I mean, listen, they're giving specials to the same people every time I see the same people, which some of them do deserve it. I go, yeah, I get why. But man, there's a lot of people just waiting on their first one. And then they're giving it to people who have been doing comedy two years. So it's bullshit. Makes, it's bullshit. How has social media helped or hurt comedy? Listen. <sighs> there's, okay, I think it's 50-50. It's hurt, it hurt comedy as far as, there, I believe, this is my, I believe there's a lot of bums in comedy. A lot of mediocre bums in comedy. Because of social media, because they're seeing, okay, I had a friend call me the other day. I haven't seen him since college. He was like a more of a business guy, corporate. And when I you started- You got the same number since college? No, not call me, sorry. Facebook me, okay. that shit. Okay. Right? No, he actually called me because I, I had given him my number a few years ago. Then he goes, yo, um, I, want, I need to call you. I need to talk to you. I was like, oh, talk to me about what? You know? And I know what he does. He's a corporate guy. So when I was doing my comedy, being broke and shit, he goes, how's that little comedy thing you're doing? Oh, uh, little. Yes. Little. They would say that. How's that little comedy thing mm -hmm. you I say, man, I'm just doing it, man. Come to a show. They would never come. Right. Boom. Those are the kind of guys that go see the more famous guys. Yes. But won't come to your shit. Yeah. I said, cool. So now, years later, he goes, yo, you know, I've been writing like comedy, this, da, 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 da. You know, I was thinking about, and I said, why? <laughs> What are you, for what? Why, why are, are you, you a corporate guy? I mean, ain't you yeah, at well, JP you, Morgan? Word. Ain't you at... word. Yeah. We're, we're older now. Why are you thinking about comedy? I said in my head, he's been watching social media. He goes, well, I've been watching a lot of video. So now you think it's easy. Ah. That's the only thing I think social media has done is they, they make it look like it's fucking easy. The YouTube tutorials. <laughs> <laughs> That's like this. Hi, welcome. How to be a tight end. <laughs>
It's so easy. <laughs> How to be the tight end. Real easy. It's Man, the same. You can yes. know. You got to show up to practice and you got to put the fucking reps in. I'm promising you because when I first started doing comedy, I was funny. I was fun. It was me. It was Corey Holcomb, who's another funny, crazy bastard. Corey Holcomb. Yeah. Corey Holcomb, who I brought into the game, by the way. You guys can thank me for Corey Holcomb because I brought him to Amateur Night. I brought him to Amateur Night, made him do comedy because I've known him since I was a teenager and he's always been a very, very, very funny mm -hmm. man. Um, yeah, it's, it, you gotta put in the reps and we were all funny at the beginning. Right. D. Ray Davis was we're all funny. We didn't have the jokes yet. You know, we didn't have nothing to say, right. but we had funny quips here and there. Right. It, you, but it takes years to get your voice in comedy. It's 10 years, 10 years. I don't give a fuck. Here's, here's an example. I was sitting with Seinfeld. Yes, I said it. I was sitting with Seinfeld. He was doing a, a documentary called Comedian. I'm in that mm -hmm. documentary. This is when he was making his comeback after Seinfeld. He was coming back to comedy. Mm -hmm. So he would come to the comedy cellar and hang out with me and hang out with all of us. And one day he asked me, how long you been doing comedy? I said, and I stuck my chest. I said, nah, about nine years now, going on 10. He's like, okay, you're a nine-year-old in comedy then. That's your comedy age. Always remember that. That's your age in comedy. I never forgot that. Wow. My age in comedy is about 27 years now. Yeah, I've been doing it almost 30 years. You know what I mean? And then, and I see, I see why it takes so long because it's effortless for me now. But, but I still see the difficulty in it because I can do one hour. Now I got to do a whole different hour. When you see Chris Rock, Chris Rock is a technician. He'll go in, come in in the comedy club, work on his shit, work on his shit. Seinfeld does the same shit. Ray Romano still comes in. These guys are multimillionaires, but because it's a craft, because the comedy is always better than you. I always, comedy is always better than you because you always got to redo something. You always right. got a story to tell. You never, if you get too conceited in a lot, and that's another thing about social media, it's making these motherfuckers cocky. They come around thinking, because, hey, man, I got 10 million followers. I go, bro, you got to follow me tonight. So, wow. Shit. We'll see what that shit does to you. Okay, buddy. You know, I know I, I'm glad that you have 10 million. I'm, right. I'm glad you got your little sock puppet thing. Good for you. Right. But we're about to do the real shit and, uh, good luck following me. But you know, it takes, and listen, I, it, you know, the, these, these younger cats that come in, they can't help when they were born. They were born in the social media phase, but I try to tell them, dog, doing a sketch is different than stand up. It Please, is. Lord, I'm telling you. Be careful because you're in a time continuum when you're on stage and people done paid their money. They done sent their kids a babysitter and motherfuckers are sitting there like this. All right, motherfucker. Shit. Hundred dollars. The goddamn ticket, man. It better be. I mean, some ha ha's in this motherfucker. <laughs> Real shit. And so you got an hour. And what if the dude before you just did a hot 30 in front of you that the, the feature just smoked it. Now you got to do your shit. I'm like, mm. I'm, it's a re, it's, it's the hardest form of entertainment, comedy, which gets no respect, barely wins awards. Comedy is the hardest. You know why? You know why people heckle? You know why people heckle, Shannon? What? Because everybody has a sense of humor. You make somebody laugh. People over here make somebody laugh. You was funny at the barbecue. You was funny at the water cooler, right? Everybody's yeah. funny. Right. You were even funny on the field. You used to talk shit on the field. I did. You did a commercial. I remember the commercial that you did. You'd be like, yo, what you gonna do, man? It was a commercial. Yeah. So that's funny. But people go, okay, well, I make people laugh. There's a man or a woman on stage making people laugh, but I'm funny too. So I'm not even gonna show you respect. You go to the opera, ain't nobody talking, are they? You go to the opera, I go to the opera, I'm, I'm cultured. You go to the opera, Figaro, Figaro, and someone's like, man, sing that shit. And he'd be like, Nigaro, Nigaro, yo, no, you're not gonna say that because you don't have a sense of opera. Right. You go to the ballet, I've been to the ballet, shit, I go to that shit, mm -hmm. you know? And nobody says, man, that girl flexible than a motherfucker. Right? Yo, why that dude balls out? Yo! <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, you, cause you have a respect, cause right. it's something you can't do. But for some reason, comedy is that one art form where everybody feels they're your equal. Yeah. Even the comedians have been doing it two years, think they're your equal. And I don't like it. I think comedy should be like the army. Like, the, I, that's what I love about the armed forces. I'm a general. You're a fucking cadet. You stand at attention when I walk in. When I see George Wallace, I just saw, I just did a show at Arsenio Hall. By the way, one of the nicest men I've ever met. I've never met Arsenio. Arsenio's a fucking legend, which people don't understand. Yeah. 
Arsenio, I went, he goes, and he goes, Godfrey, man, it's good seeing you, brother. I've been watching you. You know how his finger? Yeah. I said, Godfrey, I've been watching you. Yeah, he was way back during- there when he pointed that yeah, finger. Yeah, he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, Godfrey. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> he goes, I've been watching you since the pandemic. And I said, I got to salute you. You're a general, man. Right. You're a five star. Right. We got to I like rank and file has to happen. It's like in the rookie. You know, I, I you know, I, I, I walked on the team at Illinois. Oh, did you? I did. I, I on a dare. I did it because I, uh, I was doing trying to do track and field and, and I wasn't really sure. And then this dude named Marlon Primus, I'm saying his name. Marlon Primus, he came up with Henry Jones. Yeah. And, so this dude was so talented. He played our free, he was our free safety. Okay. Six foot four, could throw the ball a mile. Cause sometimes we'd be on the field just fucking around practicing and stuff. And he could throw the, I said, my God, man, you can throw. He could punt. I go, how come you're not a quarterback? He goes, because in Illinois, they didn't want any black quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. They kept all the white. They, they converted all the black dudes mm-hmm. into defensive guys. Right. And he said, and he was from LA. So he'd be like, yo, cuz. It's like, you should, you should try out, cuz. I dare you. Try out. And so I tried out and I made the team. Didn't start. I was the meat squad, right. but hell, I was I mean, amongst, you made it. I made it. I made the team. I made the squad. I was on there for like three years. Quick math. The less your business spends on operations on multiple systems, delivering your product or services, the more margin you have and the more money you keep. But with higher expenses on material, employees, distribution, borrowing, everything costs more. To, so to reduce the cost and headaches, smart businesses are graduating to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system, bringing accounting, financial management, inventory, HR into one platform and one source of truth. With NetSuite, you reduced IT costs because NetSuite lives in the cloud with no hardware required, access from anywhere. You cut the cost of maintaining multiple systems because you've got one unified business management suite. You improve efficiency by bringing all your major business processes into one platform, slashing manual tasks and errors. Over 37,000 companies have already made the move, so do the math and see how you'll profit with NetSuite. With everything becoming more expensive these days, you'd be wise to find proven ways to cut costs and boost performance at the same time. Now through April 15th, NetSuite is offering a one-of-a-kind flexible financing program. Head to netsuite.com slash shayshay. Jamie Foxx recently had a, he had a setback. He had a uh, illness. We don't know what it is. They don't really it's care. It's very about. mysterious. Yeah, yeah, but I'm glad he's doing better. Yeah. He's, so Jamie mm-hmm. cut his teeth. Comedian's yes. thinking about yes, getting back on stage. Yeah. What, what would you rank Jamie as far as comedic? We know what he is as a comedic actor. Yes. But as a stand up, we saw him in Living Color. He was very funny. Like, I may need security. That was funny as hell. Um, Ranking, a ranking like what you mean? Like ranking as what, what's top? it? What, what's it? What's it? What's when you look at Jamie? Yeah. What, what kind of what kind of comedian? What kind of comedic performer is he? He's a really talented singing because I opened up for him a long time ago in Indianapolis at wow. the Madam C J Walker Theater, and he he did voices. He's funny naturally. Yes, he can, do, he, he can do some impersonation. Yeah, he can do some impersonation. We can go pound for pound on the Trump though. Anytime, dog. <laughs> um, anytime you want to compete, I'm ready for Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, he, um, yeah, he did voices. He had range. Yes. And yeah, he's very, he's skilled. He's very skilled. Uh, very skilled. I've never seen him do a lot of stand up. Right. Because he's been in movies and yes. busy. So yeah. But the people say the man was a clone. And then they saw him with a white woman and said, that's him. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's Jamie he ain't with no black girl. Yeah, yeah, they can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about the cloning thing because they said he uh, they said he was at like a McDonald's. Yeah, and they said that he, they, there was a tattoo. I don't, I don't fuck. I don't right. know about that shit. I don't know anything. You trying to start something? Nah, 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 nah. nah, nah if nah, we want nah, to get nah, sixty million, nah. tell me something, boy. Nah, nah, I, nah, I, I want you to tell me because no, no, Jamie. I, I don't. I mean, I know Jamie, but I don't know him like that. Right. But I don't, I don't know if it was a clone or not. Cause it the wasn't no sick- clone, man. You know how we do stuff. So was that a real Jamie? Was that Jamie for real? Yeah. Why wouldn't in that video? Be? I don't know. Shit. The one that's the you, don't, the beach. you don't believe they're cloning? The, the one on the beach. What beach? Oh, man. You saw that man walking on, he was on vacation. With who? White girl? <laughs> you did like, man. <laughs> there you go. Because, but here, let me ask you this. Yes. Because people say, well, Shadow, you causing all this beef. Did you know that this community, this many comedians yes. didn't like each other. Listen, man, I, it's really sad to say this, but uh, 
our 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 community. I hate saying community. Community sounds so. Poor. Are we talking about the black our community? Society. Are we talking about? Com- are we talking about black, comedic? Um, no, because the white dudes. I'm gonna keep it 100. Because I know a lot of white comics, and man, they, they ain't beefing like. First, it. hell no, and it, they. I'm not saying they there's not guys that don't like each other, but these motherfuckers they they will hold that solidarity. That white male solidarity, white solidarity, it will hold it mm-hmm. because they all are on each other's podcasts. Rogan makes these motherfuckers kings. It's Rogan. And even though, shout out to Adam Carolla, because I do his, I'm a regular on his, mm-hmm. you know, and um, they they share each other's shit. They get on each other's podcast. Right. They help each other all the time. Ah, I don't even want to say this shit, but if it causes controversy, I'm down with it. We ain't shit. <laughs> Real talk. We are fucking whack. Cause here's the problem. We always have air our grievances on public platforms. Okay. This motherfucker ain't that funny. That motherfucker. I'm like, why? I don't understand. What is this fucking addiction of calling each other out in public all the time on who's funny, who's whack? I don't understand. We're the only ones that kind of do this shit. Okay. You know? And of course we watch cause controversy is always fun, but I don't know why we do that. We should be on each other's podcast. We should be like, you know, liking each other's shit, but we no. don't do that. I know some comic, and I I got comics that don't like me, and I'm not saying any I mean, names. She it, easily. she it. I got comics that don't fuck with me. I got comics that have talked shit about me, but I never let them know. They've talked shit about me. I've had comics talk shit about me to people in the business, producers who have come up to me and said, "Hey, are you friends with this particular person?" I could say his name right fucking now. And they say, yeah, I know this guy. What's up? Well, he was saying some really disparaging things about you, but we didn't believe him. I think you should give him a call. And I call him. I say, why the fuck are you talking about me? And I've never done anything to you because I don't do anything. Any, you can tell anybody. I, I mind my business, Shannon. I stay in my lane. Right. All I do is say, let me be the best comedian I can be. I do. I don't stab people. I'm not into stabbing people in the back. I guess that means you're doing pretty shit. good because that's what I've been told. What? It comes along with the business. When just, you're doing well, people take shots. They at you. take shots at me. I've, I've had women tell me shit. Here's the thing. When a dude is talking bad about another dude to a woman, that's bitch shit. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's bitch shit. Yes. I don't do that. I can have a beef with you, right? And if I see a girl that you know, I'm not going to say shit to her about you. That's right. cornball yeah, shit. Well, well, but I... they do that to me. And I've been told by women. That's what's great is like my relationship with certain women be like, yo, I just want to let you know. You thought that was your man, blah, 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 blah. He, you know, so, and it's like, we are fucked up to each other. I'm not saying there are pockets of comics that do help each other. Black right. comics. Yeah. Let me not. Cause yeah. then they'll be like, because man, how are you going to say that about the old black? It's the truth. Yeah. We don't help each other. Even on, even on social media, motherfuckers won't like your shit to help you. DL Hughley does that shit for me all the time. He always puts my videos up. If your videos are great, he'll put it on his platform. Mm-hmm. DL always looks out. He always looks out, man, likes my shit. Michael Blackson will like my shit sometimes. Just just a little I, I little guess, things here and there. I guess he ain't put mine up because I'm Wendy Williams with a weight set. So he ain't putting up. You're up Wendy there. Williams with a weight set? Yeah. <laughs> ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one time you did send something to me when I imitated you. You say, yeah. man, I thought we was boys, man. Yeah. <laughs> How the fuck you gonna do that shit, man? And then that was it. I never heard nothing else. <laughs> no, but, but I, no, but listen, I, I we, we're not, we need... It, that's always been a problem with us in the first place, though. It is. It's our it unity. Has. Our it unity. Has. Our unity. Can I tell you a story? Sure. I'd love to hear Okay, it. there was a guy I knew who was a big-time drug dealer pushing mad weight. He was one of the biggest in New York City. And and he was telling us, me and my boy and shit, Artie Fuqua, he was telling us, um, you know, I ain't, I ain't afraid of shit. I ain't afraid of nothing. He goes, but I went to China to do, make this deal with the, the, the mafia over mm-hmm. there, the triads and shit. Yeah. And he goes, I'm talking to these dudes. And he goes, I ain't never been afraid of shit. But when I got into their, to their like headquarters, there, yeah. they were so organized. It was scaring the shit out of me. They were so calm and so organized. It was sharp. And the guy, he's talking to the head dude and he goes, and they're just having a, like a small talk. He goes, you know, the one thing about black people, he says, you guys are, you, you're the trendsetters. Everybody copy black people. You're so creative. Your music, your style, everybody like black people. We jealous of you. But the one thing you don't have is unity. Very easy to break you up. Wow. And this is in the drug game. He says, we don't even. He said, we can't even organize crime. (laughs) Wow. 
We can't even organize crime. Everybody got uh, mafia, Italian, right? There's a supposed Russian. gay mafia, Russian mafia. We got Irish mafia, and black folks can't even organize crime. Shame. What we? It's and it's the same with comics. I'm sorry, we do not help each other. And I know guys that talk shit about me. I know guys that shit on me all the time, but I keep it moving. I, and it's a shame because I'm not going around talking about shit. And I like helping people. If I can help, I'm the first motherfucker to try and help. I do. But some cats will block you out. Don't want you to have shit. You know, there's some, there's some, there's other gatekeepers right. within the gatekeepers. Wow. Yeah. There's other gatekeepers. But they are gatekeepers. Yeah, because they can be like, well, what do you think about this guy? Oh, man. Nah, oh. man. Yeah, one guy told me and told some some executive that I'm a joke thief. And one thing I don't like is someone call me a joke thief because I'm original. And I said, and I said, don't you ever fucking call me a jokey because you're a joke thief. You're a fucking joke. Don't ever say, but you know, we'll say shit like that. Yeah. I'm calling it out. Hope this gets about 60 million. Cause I, <laughs> I think the thing with us, we yeah. like as long as we, if you're here and we're here, we cool. Yes. But don't get here. It, and you better not get here. Which is cause then, up. cause then I got to try to do something to whittle you down. So you come back to my level or I elevate to your or level. Or you get here and you pull the ladder up. Don't let anybody else climb. Yes. But my thing is I like when people like you see a guy like Kevin Hart who brings up his boys. They're all eating. Yeah. I love that yeah. shit. He goes, Oh no, you eat the plastic you, club. You the got a couple million. Yeah. You got a couple million. You got a nice car. That's the way you do the yes. shit. Yeah. He don't owe all of us anything. It's the people that are working with him. They're eating. You know who else is great? Nick Cannon. Shout out to Nick. I did three seasons of Wild and Out. Right. Reluctantly. I did it. Cause he was like, man, when are you going to do Wild and Out? I said, I don't feel like rapping fucking. ABCs and shit, and I'm not good at that shit. He's a no, but we're going to make it to where you can do your impersonation. Nick Cannon's another guy. No one's perfect, but Nick is hiring people, you know, from what I saw. Hiring people, likes to see you do well. Right. You know, stuff like that. We need that. Like Club Shay Shay. Look at how you bring us on here. You might make us kings, Shannon. Damn it. But I guess people say I shouldn't give you guys a platform because I force you guys to air out. You know what's fucked up? Say same with the you know the other TV that we I used to be on, you know the other yeah. TV yeah. But why? As soon as you got big, that's when all the bullshit started. You noticed that too, huh? Yeah, because when they said, "Oh, I know, think Shannon's gay." First of all, if someone says you're gay, that means you made it. You understand? I'm waiting for somebody to say I'm gay. They say, "Well, that's a moist booty ass motherfucker." Man. I made it. They say I was moist booty, brother. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and th that means you're doing well. And right. it's fucked up. Like, why? I don't understand why we get like when you get success, people are upset at you. But there's some people that get up, that get to a level and forget about everybody. Right. Like, I like you didn't get this on your own. Mm -hmm. Why would you like not? I mean, why wouldn't you turn your back? Why would you want to turn around? And once you establish yourself. Bring the people in that you know will do well. Right. On their own. They don't, don't just bring people in. Some people bring you in, you can bring them in and it ain't shit. Right. They ain't doing anything. Right. You bring the people in that you go, oh yeah, that, cause that's what I would do. Right. If I ever got to a level, I'd be like, my, my man, Ruben Paul, who was a fantastic comedian. He opens up for George Lopez. He, Ruben Paul, Dante Nero. I have Marina Franklin, Yamanika Saunders. I'm letting you all know these names. I would bring the people that are around right. me that I go, they can do the job. They can do the job. That's what I would do. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it's like in our mentality, maybe because we always like to trace it. Maybe it's a slavery thing. Right. Because in the slave masters, remember, they divided us up mm -hmm. and they only gave the, the house slave some and the field slave was like, Lord, Lord have mercy. <laughs> Why did he get everything? Right. Right. But I'm, that's bullshit. Right. No, it's not bullshit, but it is bullshit because you can stop that cycle. Correct. You know what I'm saying? If you chose to. Chose to. I go, I, I, maybe it's my parenting. I don't know. You haven't asked me about that, but you will. Yeah. About my parenting, my, you know, you know I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, but I would say, okay, when you was telling the story about how you went to college and you became kind of militant and you know, you were very black power, militant. Yes. And your, power. your dad was like, we send you to school. Oh, do, do, do your accent. You do, do. Cause I'm, you know, I did my, I did my ancestry. Okay. I heard you're 90% Nigerian. You fucking look, you look more Nigerian than me. <laughs> you look like a dick. Michael Blackson told me I just, I got off the boat yesterday. <laughs> man, you look, you, man, you, you should be driving Uber. Go, uh, <laughs> it's like, where do you want to go? <laughs> okay. My name is Shannon. 
<laughs> so how, 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 obviously. 90% Nigerian. 90%. Fuck. Your parents, mom and dad. My mom and how dad. How strict were they with your upbringing? Okay. My parents aren't here anymore, but bless, you know, up. bless up to my mother and my father. I'm Godfrey Jr., by the way, Godfrey Sr. Um, they were, they were strict because, you know, like immigrants mm -hmm. always have rules. They say, you know, you come in into the house. Were your parents first generation? First generation. I was, I'm first generation Nigerian mm -hmm. and they came straight from Lagos, Nigeria okay. and, um, and small villages, you know, and my father, who uh, got his um, a, a, a sort of a teaching scholarship to a school in Nebraska, okay. Omaha. It's called Dana College. It's, I think it's defunct now. And that's where I was born. Okay. I was born in Nebraska. Wow. Right? That's why me and Gabrielle Union relate well, because she's from Nebraska. Mm -hmm. Malcolm X is from Nebraska. Warren Buffett. Hey, that's I'm yeah. just counting. Um, and so my father was in school there in Nebraska. That's when I was born. My sister was born in Nigeria. My sister Juliana okay. was born in Nigeria for two years. Born in Nigeria. We're Igbos, Igbo tribe. I don't okay. know what tribe. You don't know what tribe. I don't you know are. what tribe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You might be Igbo, dog. <laughs> Shit. I can see it in your face. <laughs> um. So my sister was born there. Then I was born in Nebraska. My brother was born in Chicago. Grew up in Chicago, and they were strict. They were, you know, like. My father was an educator for 45 years on the west side of Chicago, Malcolm X College, and he created programs for prisoners. My father was in the system, the teaching system. My mother was a nurse, okay. one of the best nurses in Chicago. She trained some of my friends wow. as nurses. He was a, a ob gyne nurse mm -hmm. delivering babies. So they were strict with my sister, especially, you know, you can't wear makeup until this age. Right. Come home at nine when the, my father used to say, you see the light there? You see that light? When it comes, you better be in the house. I will beat you there. Yeah. It was just, that's what it was. Right. I grew up in an area of Chicago, what's called Uptown. Chicago is the most segregated city in the country till this day. Wow. Martin Luther King got hit with a brick in Chicago. Yeah. Right? And this narrows, right? Yes. And he got hit with a brick. It's the most segregated city in Chicago. That and Milwaukee. And Milwaukee's not that far from Chicago. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Milwaukee, yeah. The most segregated. And... And it was discovered by a black man, Chicago, a French black man named Jean Baptiste Point du Sable, du Sable Museum, du Sable Drive. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's the most segregated. And my father, as a teacher, would be like, you make sure your homework is done. You, you come in the house at a certain time, you know, all that. So they were strict, reasonably strict, I would say. Mm -hmm. You know, my sister a little bit harder because she was a girl. Right. But they were reasonably strict. My parents were really, I mean, we got our asses whooped. Like, right. For real, like, you know, <laughs> that kind of ass. Right. You know, <laughs> so what, what did, what did they, what did they want you guys to become? This is what Nigerian parents do. They already tell you what you're going to be. My father, he's like, so this is what you will do. You will go grade school. Then you go to high school. Then you go to college. Then you will be a doctor. You, my father was like, and you're like, all right, cool. So they live vicariously through, through you. you. So you will be a doctor. That's what I said. So I have pre-med psychology. That's what I did. I actually, I play, you know, I played football one, one, my senior year in high school. I played it. I went to Lane Tech High School. Okay. Shout out to Lane Tech High School. I was in a, first I was in a Catholic school because my father did not like public schools. You know, as a teacher, he's like, you have to go to Catholic school. You have to go to Catholic school. And I went to the St. Benedict racist ass, religious bullshit <laughs> ass fucking white racist n nuns and shit fuck them and i got and i wanted to get into this other school lane tech right which was a smart school college prep school it was number one with michelle obama school whitney young got into there and then i played football for my senior year and then i got like a scholarship to memphis state university i got a couple scholarships as a wide receiver right. and then my father said no you have to go. I don't trust. He didn't trust it. The scholarship shit. He said they probably you end up not being able to do your homework. So I couldn't do any of that shit. So he was very strict on that. Like, but they were reasonably strict, man. Where I'm glad they were the way they were. Just immigrant shit. As I look at myself now, I'm like, I'm glad that they were the way they were. You know, my sister is great. My brother Daniel, and he's still in Chicago. He's a train. But we're all we were um, well raised, and I'm right. I'm surprised I'm even in this business. Cause my family was pretty normal. My family was pretty normal, right. like normal problems. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I'm in this business. Cause you would think like a lot of times people come to entertainment because of family dysfunction, mm -hmm. you know, 
no narcissism, which I have. Right. Narcissism, drug shit, all kinds. I was grew up pretty fucking normal and I'm in this fucking business. Wow. Because I love comedy so much and I love expressing myself, but I'm not into the the grimy shit, right. really. Right. You know what I mean? Then you got into the movies. Zoolander, Johnson Family Vacation, Soul Plane, Cookout, Bad Origi Girls. Original Gangsters was yeah. my first film. Really? Original Gangsters with uh, Pam Greer, Richard Roundtree, uh, rest in peace, Richard Roundtree, um, uh, Super, uh, Ron Superfly O'Neal. Mm -hmm. I was my first movie, and we shot in Gary, Indiana with Jim Brown. I was with Jim Brown, rest and uh, it was I, that was my first movie I ever auditioned for. And uh, what's his name? Uh, Fred Williamson called me. I remember he called me. I don't know how he got my number. He goes, is this Godfrey? I said, yeah. He said, this is the hammer. The original. I said, Hammer, he goes, the original. He was very 70. The yeah. original. He goes, you got the part of Marcus. Meet, meet us tomorrow. And da, da, da. I was like, wow. So that was my first movie. Mm -hmm. Then I got, uh, uh, what is it? Chain Reaction with Keanu Reeves, Reeves. and Morgan Freeman. Mm -hmm. I played like a, an African student, you know? So that was when stuff was starting they to typecast like, you. They typecast you. They typecast you. But Soul Play, let me tell you something about Soul Play. First of all, people will talk shit about Soul Play, right? That shit was like that, though. That, that shit's funny as it hell. Is. So it when was. you, I watched it on my own. I go, let me see, because I didn't watch it for a while. And everyone's like, man, Soul Play bullshit. I said, first of all, when we all auditioned, black folks weren't working. There was no auditions going on. You know how sometimes Hollywood just leaves us out of shit? Right. White people go, Wait, let's not give them anything this year. Right. So boom, I was like, fuck. Okay, everybody's reading for Soul Play, and my, my my managers are like, my agents are like, uh, there's a script. Uh, it's pretty ghetto. <laughs> and I said, really? He goes, uh, we got the, but the star, one of the stars of Snoop Dogg is signed to it. I said, Snoop Dogg? Shit, that would be dope as fuck if I get a Snoop Dogg? International shit. I was like, I want to hang out with Snoop Dogg. Right. That was what motivated me to audition for it. So I walk in, in the audition, my boy Yuli, Ulysses, man, he was a, uh, he's a dude from New York City. And his brother, Jesse Torero, is the one that directed it. So I walk in and they say, so what you gonna do? Cause Soul Plane was everybody was going, motherfucker, fuck that, fuck this shit. Yeah. I said, I got an idea. What if I play an African guy? They said, what? I'm gonna play an African dude because Snoop Dogg's already there. Right. Let him do all the motherfucking, let me be the, what is the problem, you know? Right. If, and black Africans and African Americans always butt heads yeah. anyway. Yeah. That would be a perfect dynamic. So I went in yeah, there. Yeah, why y'all hate us? What, what? <laughs> well, you're Nigerian now. You need to talk to them. Why y'all, why do you hate Shannon on me? For what? No, why do we, we don't hate, that's some bullshit. Nah, y'all do, y'all be hating. No, wait a minute. Y'all be sneak tip hating. Wait, first of all, as me being raised here, mm -hmm. me being raised here, I protect both. First of all, some Nigerians, they do sometimes, Africans in general, some of them do think they're better than African Americans, which is bullshit. Right. Because it's not the truth, because Africans are treated like shit in Africa. Colonization. <laughs> yeah. England, France. That's why you speak in French, not because you're special. Yeah. <laughs> because they came and sat on your shit and said, you're going to speak what the fuck we speak. Right. The Dutch... All of that, all of them, Italian, all of those European countries came and colonized you, treated you like shit. I mean, you go to South Africa, white people are calling themselves Africans and they don't even look it. That's some gangster shit, don't you think? Right. I'm from South Africa. No, you're not. You're <laughs> Dutch. You just didn't know when the fuck to leave. You see what I'm saying? This is, it's, it's fucked up. So that should tell you and what African Americans have gone through that fucking hell that they've gone through and still go through. How are you coming from that mentality and saying you thinking you better than them because you have an accent? Because for some reason, the, the white society in America tends to, Oh, Africa has an accent. It's a little different. It's like when you're British, like each of when you have a British accent yeah. and you're black. Hello. I don't know. That's what I'm doing. Ooh, that's why they get to play us. Listen, British black dudes are playing drug dealers. I thought Idris Elba was from Baltimore. <laughs> I thought he was. You know, he was like, yo, you motherfuckers don't understand. And then I'm watching BBC. You know, when I did The Wire, I studied um, the ghetto in <laughs> Baltimore. You sound like Lord Baltimore, motherfucker. What the fuck? What the fuck was that? And then this Driss guy, there's another Driss. Yeah. A snowfall. Yeah. I'm thinking this motherfucker's like, yo, cuz. And he's like, you know, I took him. You know, the fuck is this? You know, another because they I don't know what it is. Something about this is just my theory. 
Something about that black American accent. Hey, hey man, fuck me. <laughs> but hello. Oh. And we see, we'll let Idris play that. Yeah. But then when he gets back to his normal self, we get to hear James Bond. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But we don't want to hear that. It's something about that. I don't know. I think it's 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 just a little weird. It's like African Americans go through hell, but everybody copies African Americans. Yeah. Right. Everybody does. All around, I've been to a lot of countries. You've been to a lot of countries. I've been to a lot. I've been to a lot of countries. You haven't been to a lot of countries. You're so southern. Yeah. Like I mean, I'll be you know I'll go. I've been to a lot of states. A lot of states. God <laughs> damn. I, mean, I go fishing over there. Yeah. Get it, so damn. And I get my my RV. I just, yeah. Like my grandma said, man, if you ain't got nothing to do, stay where you at. <laughs> 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 but, but, Wait, but, no, no, but listen, I'm saying Africa, when I've been to China, I perf I actually performed. I was the first American to perform in Russia in 2018 in right. Moscow. I and, and black shit is everywhere. Hip hop. There's Russian hip hop. I was in Lithuania, went to a Lithuanian hip hop club. I was the only black dude there. And they were all grabbing their dicks. And but I'm like this. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi. That's our culture. Yeah. China everywhere is hip hop. When I was in Japan, when I was in Korea, black people are copied. All that K-pop is just nothing but fucking a new edition. It's right. all black shit everywhere. African American, I think the African American culture is the strongest culture on the planet. Period. Because even Africans are going, yo, nigga, man, fuck all that shit, nigga. Really? <laughs> you sound stupid, man. This nigga got a lot of nerve, man. I, I was just saying, though, my nigga. Shut up. <laughs> the fuck out of here. Michael Blackson does it, but he's fucking around. Right. But these, there's do, there's people doing it. Right. I see they got these, um, Reality shows, these African like reality shows. And she's like, shit, that bitch, I know that bitch not talking to me like that. Well, really? The they got is, what? They I'm got, not they saying, got real housewives of Africa. They got shit like that now. Nigeria <laughs> got Nollywood and all that. Hell, it's the third largest movie. But they're acting like there's, they're taking from, um, African American shit. Right. You know, a lot of them are taking it. Some people may not agree, but it's facts. And it's like, why are you shitting on Africa? And every African is not shitting on African American. That's right, bullshit. Right. But they, it's like, it doesn't make sense. Right. Because African Americans are, they're the, the, I mean, Africans are creative too, of course. Right. But African American, that culture is the coolest shit on the planet. Right. Keep it 100. Hip hop, you know, just everything. It's like, damn. Right. Jazz, blues, everything. You create, African Americans created all of American right. music. It's all black. Right. Like, even country music, even though they complaining, like John Schneider from the Dukes of Hazard. What are you fucking still Joe Bo Duke? Motherfucker, what's yeah. wrong with you? He goes, oh, uh, 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 what's that? What, uh, uh, Beyonce, boy, it's just like a dog pissing on everything. Shut up. It's black. Yeah. Country music is ours. It's black. I'm claiming it. And you're going to say, oh, good, you just come to the home, hey, home, hey. Right. Shut up. <laughs> you, you still white, white, white people take from old black, black men and black women and, and, and make it and then say, you stay out of God damn. Look at the, look at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. How the fuck you gonna have a Hall of Fame and we gotta wait to get inducted from the music the black people created? And you got a whole white fucking, well, we don't, we don't know. What? <laughs> have you been to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Elvis's shit goes from here to the bottom. James Brown got, <laughs> That's the measurement in James Brown talk. Eh, he got a little fucking, <laughs> yeah. he got, he got an exhibit this big. It's literally, eh. Wow. That's it. This exhibit is that big. Chuck Berry. But Elvis goes, all the way down the hall. All the way down the hall. <laughs> fucking, all the way down the hall. <laughs> Fuck out of here. So soul playing, you get the soul playing. Soul play, I get the, so, so I did the thing. I did the, 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 the and I got the part in the room. They were like, you got that shit. They like, you got it. Just walk out and pretend like you didn't get it. I was like, and they said, what you doing? I said, eh. and everything I did in Soul Plane was all improv. I didn't even follow the script. I just, they said, just go. And me and Snoop, I was there with Snoop for nine days. It was the best shit ever. I had me and Snoop just laughing. We're just in there laughing. It was great. It was, and to see Snoop Dogg laugh is the funniest shit ever because right. he doesn't make a sound when he laughs. He just goes, <laughs> God damn, dog, you funny as hell. That's that's yeah. Snoop, and just to be around one of the greatest hip hop artists ever, and to be sh be sharing my comedic talents with right. him was I learned from him. He learned from me. It was great. He gave me great compliments. It was, and that's what we've been friends ever since. So, and Soul Plane is a is a, is a cult classic, it by is. the way. 
because I was getting hood respect. I would be in like, you know, I'd be in some fucked up hoods. They'd be like, hey, man, you that soul plane. Hey, man, that African nigga. Yo, hey, dog. I was like, but I never got on the poster. Really? Hell no. That's the best story of my life that always got kind of being left to the side. But I'm sorry. I think my character was the best on that bitch. I'm going to say that. Gay mind. Not like two men doing this. But you also, Johnson Family Vacation. It was yes. an opportunity for you to work with Steve, work with Sid. So yes. what was that like? What was that set like? Johnson Family Vacation. It was, it was, uh, Jason uh, Momona was on there. Was he? J- yeah, was Johnson, he? Jason Momoa was on there? Yeah. He must have been in another scene. Cause I had my scene. Sometimes you don't, you don't come across. Yeah. Okay. So I was, it was, it was, uh, Vanessa Williams, Cedric, Little Bow Wow, and, um, what's, um, Beyonce's sister's name? Salon. Salon is Knowles. So my, I was a cop. Yeah. And I'm supposed to stop them from, they were speeding. And so, you know, uh, what's his name? Lil Bow Wow throws piss out the window because he had to pee in a cup and it hits right. me in the face. So I pull them over. I'm like one of those, uh, the chips, Mostly, like, you know, cops. yeah, most of cops. So I stopped chocolate it. Chip. So I had one chocolate chip, but it was a longer scene than that. Really? I had some dope ass lines in that shit and they cut my shit out. Yeah. I'm sorry, Cedric, but they cut a lot of my shit out. Um, so I was just there for, I was supposed to be there for one day. Right. So I came in there and I did my, I said, hey, one day, Hey, it's cool. Fox searchlight. And so I improv and he comes out, you know, Cedric go, Hey brother, what's up, man? You know what I'm saying? He goes, and I do this. I go, Hey man, I'm not your brother. Okay. I say words like, uh, facetious stuff like that. So all this little brother, th- I did this whole, right. and they cut that shit out, man. And I, and then after I left, they were like, they were watching the dailies. You right. watch, they said they back. brought me back and I had two more, two more. See, they, they fired the other dude that was supposed to be the share and they gave me all that shit. Wow. You know, and I've always had little moments like that, but I've, it people, and, and I think personally people say you're like one of the most underrated comedians right. in the business. You know, people say that, man, when are you going to get, you should be, you should be, but you should be, but there's certain things that I won't do though in the biz. I'm not going to do it. I just, what you ain't going to do? What? What do um, you mean? There you go. No, what? No, you... I mean, you say there's certain things that you're not going to do. <sighs> can't do the dress, man. I can't wear the dress. They try to put you in a dress? Man, they, I've, I've, I've been, like, <laughs> I've, like, I've had auditions where I'm like, let me just see what the character description. I'm like, nah, I'm good. Mm. I'm like, I'm good. No, nah, I'm not. I mean, you can save it for somebody else, but I don't really feel comfortable doing that. That's just me. I'm right. the, that's to all. each his own. To each his own. And, right. you know, if they want to do that, they do. I ain't that good of an actor. Um, the cookout. <laughs> the cookout was cool. That was cool. Queen Latifah. Queen Latifah Winnie. was fantastic, man. That was cool. Megan Good. Oh, yeah. Megan Good. It was a, a bunch yeah. of people in that. It was Farrah Fawcett was in it. Danny yeah. Glover. Yeah. A lot of people was in it. Yeah. So, and um, um Jenner, uh, Jennifer Lewis. Okay. No, you had what you call them within it, Wendy Williams. Wendy, when? Oh, she must have been a different scene. Jennifer Lewis was in it too. Jennifer uh, Lewis, that was fun. Yes. That was fun. That was fun. I had fun on that. Zoolander was great. Ben Stiller Man, you've was been cool. in a lot of. I've been all right, but if yeah, I'm, no, I'm, but you, but you want, but you want to be, and you have major. You don't want to be there for a day or two. You want to be there. I want to be like fifteen days. I can see myself doing action films. I can see myself doing dark comedies. I have, I had great acting teachers in New York City. I can see myself doing like even when people see movies, they go, "Man, I could see you in that shit." I, I was, oh, I could see you in that shit. I would yeah. love to do all that shit, right. real shit. I mean, um, um, Gabrielle Union put me in a film um, that came out last year, uh, um, Perfect Find, yeah. Perfect Find. Gabrielle just put me in it, which was great. Thank you, Gabrielle Union. She put me in the movie. It's a romantic comedy, and I play this dude that's trying to hit on her douche. I have a couple scenes in it. Right. It was fantastic, but I'd like to be working. All the time on films, man. It's just the business has changed a lot, you know, but I think doing just constantly doing the social media, constantly doing, you know, just build your shit. There's, it's a do, it's a different landscape now, you know? So did you think, are you, are you promoting yourself enough? I think I am. I'm not, I'm trying not to leave any stone unturned. I got a podcast. I, I do, even though my social media was blocked, they blocked my shit. I had 834,000. I know that ain't shit to you, but on, on, on IG, on or? IG, and they blocked me for violations. Cause you know, when I get trolled, I'd be like, man, shut your dumb ass up. And they go, community guidelines. You can't say that. 
Sorry. And they block me. They block my lives. I think that social media is racially biased, personally. I think they block a lot of black creators. They shadow ban a lot of black creators. They let the white motherfuckers, they be getting millions and millions. They be calling people names, all kind of shit, all this fucking racial hatred, but they never get blocked. But I get blocked for shit. I, I, this is what I believe. If I'm wrong, fine, but they blocked me for bullshit. I didn't say anything political. I just say, yo, someone's trolling me. Yo, I know you ain't talking shit, but I'm a comedian, right? But I've been blocked. So I have a new, I have a new one. I you, you ain't paid to get it back? You didn't have pay who? You know somebody? Maybe. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, boy. <laughs> I, I, I gotta get my shit back, but I started a new one. It's called, it's Godfrey Comic. At Godfrey Comic, follow me on that. Godfrey Comic, in case I don't get my shit back. Right. But it's been deactivated. I don't, I need 800,000. I was closing in on a million. Yeah. yeah. Damn. And they always slowing my shit. TikTok, same shit. Slow my shit down, barely get numbers. Yeah. They Godfrey got, Comedian is my TikTok. They got it in for you. Thank you. Uh, let me ask you this. Yes. You said you, you've had some roles. You've been in some, some good movies. Yes. Is there any role that you turned down that you wish you hadn't? Uh, no, no, everything that I chose, I'm glad I did. And I, I didn't, the turn down, no, no. The stuff that I turned down, I'm like, nah. It wasn't for you. Nah, it wasn't for me. Right. You know what I mean? There was one, I mean, I've auditioned for stuff, which I go, damn, I wish I'd have got that shit. Right. Cause I, I, I pick and choose what I want. Right. You know, I go, yo, I'll go out for that. And then you see the person get like, damn. Wish I had that shit. Right. Yeah, so that's about it. It's time to break up with overdraft fees. Every cent counts towards your big financial goals this year. The Chime checking account can handle all the heavy lifting while you get a handle on achieving your goals for the year. With the Chime online checking account, you can enjoy lots of perks like fee-free overdrafts up to $200 for eligible members to access over 60,000 fee-free ATMs and no monthly fees. You can get even paid up to two days early with direct deposit. There is no overdraft fees and no impact on your credit score to apply. Signing up for Chime takes minutes. So enjoy millions of other Chime members and sign up today. Get started at Chime.com slash Shay Shay. That's Chime.com slash Shay Shay. Banking services and debit cards provided by Bancorp, N.A. or Stride Bank, N.A. members, FDIC. Spot me eligibility requirements. Overdraft limits may apply. Early access to direct deposit funds depends on the payer. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. So what happened with uh, uh, on the serious? Oh, shit. <laughs> he good, man. Let me get this cognac, man. <laughs> ah. Well, um, serious, I got fired. Because here's the thing, this particular person, I used to do some little comedy stints on this person's show. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to name them. And um, and I would go on their show every Friday. I would go on their show, do funny shit, do funny shit. And then they said, hey, um, you know, you, you ever think about doing radio? I was like, not really. I do my friend's shows. And I don't really think about that because, you know, the corporate shit, I'm not yeah. into that. And they was like, no, you should do a show. I'm going to get you on. I'm going to get you on this channel. I said, oh, okay, this urban channel. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, cool. It's going to be like one hour. Long story short, I started the hour show. It was the power hour. And I was doing really well. I was killing. I was killing that shit. And I said, well, I just want to let you know, I'm very honest. I go straight forward. You know what I'm saying? I'm very honest and I want, I want to make sure it's okay. No, we're just trying to change this channel. It's a little boring. We need some new life in it. I said, I'm letting you know. I'm honest and I talk about it's all good. <sighs> I said, okay. Then I get two hours. They give me two hours. I go boom. Cause everybody's like, yo, Godfrey needs longer. He needs longer. Two hour show. I get prime time, 6 PM to eight. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's traffic. Start doing really well. All of a sudden I do something to somebody. I have a little uh, uh, confrontation with a particular person. This, 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 this security guard. And I was in DC, the security guard, I, this truck driver, you know, most truck drivers listen to Sirius XM. Mm -hmm. Truck driver wanted a picture. I was in the lobby of the, the headquarters and this truck driver comes in, goes, brother, man, I, I, I subscribe. Can you, can I get a picture? I said, sure. And so this brother, this security was of the other community mm -hmm. and goes, literally talks like, cause I imitated everybody. Everybody knew that I imitated. He goes, uh, uh, no pictures, no pictures. No, you can't have no pictures. And he was really rude. And I said, all right, but you ain't got to like yell at me. Damn, he just wanted a picture. So he couldn't take a picture. The truck driver is pissed off. And I, and so I go up to this 
I go up to do another show and the, and the person that's interviewing me say, yo, you look a little mad. I said, yeah, there was this security dude down there talking about, and now I'm imitating. Right. And I said, remember, I'm not making fun of the community. I'm making fun of the way this guy talked to me. And I say, you know what? They, you know, he kicked that guy out. They should have took, they should have dragged him by his braids and threw him out. That's what I said. And right. then I got fired the next day. For that. For that. And I'm, I talk shit all the time, but I got fired for that. Wow. Done. So I was like, but in a way though, I wouldn't have done that Steve Harvey thing that wouldn't have went viral. If I didn't get fired, I wouldn't be on a podcast doing the Steve Harvey thing. So it was a blessing in disguise. Wow. So go suck my. No. So let me get this right. <laughs> suck your mother. You tried to do Saturday Night Live, Dev Comedy Jam. Oh, De- Dev Comedy Jam never chose me. God. I never. I, 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 I'm trying to figure out how the hell you sitting on my couch. You ain't got chose for nothing. What the hell? Who the fuck was? Oh, I mean, who? But this is about the most underrated comedian, isn't it? <laughs> you didn't get chose for shit. I'm surprised I'm here. Like, get that. This ain't even going to show. <laughs> Yo, Def Jam skipped me. I auditioned many times and did well. They never, they never chose me for. Somebody told me, what's his name? Told me, should I bring out names? Go ahead, sure. Uh, Bob Sumner told me uh, he was the guy that you got in. You got through him to get to Jeff. He said, yo, you're not ghetto enough. I go, I'm not from the ghetto, but I'm not from wealth either. Right. But I'm not from the ghetto. I'm right. a normal dude. Right. But I'm funny. I'm, you've sent me to every other room. There was a room called the Peppermint Lounge, which Bill Bellamy hosted. Mm-hmm. Bill Bellamy hosted that shit, and I did well in that bitch. I was go- doing all the rooms in Brooklyn, and they just never chose me. They chose everybody around me. They had Dion, Corey, everybody around me. They, he never chose me. I don't know what the reason was. I was like, I guess, but this is the story of my life. They didn't choose me. Um, SNL, the first time I, 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 I got, I auditioned, didn't get it. Then I, um, another time, didn't get it. And the third time, didn't get it. So I, I don't know. Cause people say, how are you coming? You're not SNL. Uh, and, and a guy told me this the guy who was a member of SNL. He told me, he said, I, he said, I was at your audition the first time you did it. And I know the reason why you didn't get it. I know the reason why he says your performance was strong as shit. It was strong. And they just, they don't want to see that. That's what I was told. He said, you know, remember what Eddie Murphy did with SNL? Yeah. They go, they don't they, want that. that's what, that's what he told me. And I'm like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, okay. I don't know. I, that's what he said, but it was like, you know, it's, it's shit is painful and shit. For you sure. get mad because you're like, SNL, fuck. That's, that's a whole, that's a whole different level. So, you know, you sometimes feel like a failure at times. I ain't gonna front. Sometimes you go, man, I must be a fucking failure. Damn, no failures. Just delayed success. Delayed success, huh? God damn it. But yeah, that's how I felt like that. And I'm gonna, and people, when I, and you know, you're on stage, you're doing your shit, you're like, but listen, I'm not, a, I'm successful in what I'm doing. Let right, me not sure. sit there. Just not yeah. cry baby shit. But you know, it's just like when you, when you're going out for certain things that you grew up on and you can't, you're like, and you oh, really God. want, whoo, that shit, that SNL thing killed me. Cause right. I, the first time doing it, I get a standing ovation. Whoo. Have you ever been booed? Yes. Peppermint Lounge. <laughs> well, damn, you, t- you was bragging no, about it. Like, no, I'm no. the Peppermint Lounge. That was my life. Well, that's why you didn't well, get hold on. Shit. Hold on. That was like my third, that was like my, about my fifth or sixth time doing Peppermint Lounge. And it, I got booed because this dude was talking shit and I started getting on him and he was related to a lot of people and they started booing my ass. They was like, yo, that's my cousin, man. Get the fuck out of boo. So they started booing me. Oh, okay. right. It, I was doing okay at the beginning because I was used to the place. Right. Since this is Newark, New Jersey. This is New Jersey, East Orange, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Not Newark, East Orange, New Jersey. Okay, yeah. Yeah, everybody, even Anthony Mason was in the audience. Anthony Mason, the Knicks, talking shit. You know, everybody was there. And so the dude, some dude was like, yeah, you corny as hell. I said, oh, shit. And I just, because I was comfortable, so I started talking shit. Then everybody started booing me. But this is what I did when they booed me. I did the end of Scarface. Mm-hmm. You know, with Scarface, I was like, oh, it's okay. And I was doing this, ah, and they started laughing again. Right. But then they were like, no, nigga, boo, they rebooed me. <laughs> they, re- they rebooed me. They that was the only time, nigga, you, you, we ain't laughing no <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, you almost got us, boy. <laughs> but I, knock on wood, I've really never been booed before. Just on that, right. that time. I've never right. been booed. I've had sets that maybe aren't as good as some other, but I've been fortunate where, right. you know, I don't really get. Booed. What's your craziest story, stand up story? Oh, yeah. I studied martial arts for 10 years. Mm-hmm. Hapkido, okay? Hapkido. Shout out to Master David Herbert, my subonym. Um, 
he, um, I studied in New York 10 years. So I was really into martial arts and I was, um, I remember I was hosting at this club, Comedy Cellar. I was hosting and this dude was talking shit, right? He was talking shit. And I told, and him and his girlfriend were both heckling me. And I, and I was like, yo, y'all be quiet. Yo, chill out. I'm getting your ass. Chill out. <laughs> they go like, whoa, whoa. And then I went, <sighs> laid into him. Bang, 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 bang. Right? Place went crazy. And I said, y'all ready for more show? I bring up Louis C.K. Bam, Louis goes up. So I come outside because you can come. It's it's downstairs. So you come right outside. Yeah. I'm standing outside just chilling. And the dude that I just shit on comes outside. And he's like, yo, man, I didn't appreciate what you fucking said to my girlfriend. I said, but you was talking and I kept warning you. You know, we, it was fun. Oh, what the fuck, man? He goes, nah, you got to apologize. I said, man, I ain't doing Fuck that. Oh, he wanted you to apologize to his girl. I was like, man, I ain't saying, I ain't doing shit. He goes, well, you weren't that funny. I said, but you both are average looking anyway, and you lucky I didn't, that's what I said. Yeah. So he said, what? I said, you are what the fuck? I said, now I'm into martial arts, so I'm like, uh, right? So, and I can't make this up. The day before that, we was working on attacks when people attack you in, in my in my dojo mm -hmm. when people tackle you and stuff so we was practicing that shit mm -hmm. like over and over and my master's like you never know you never know how they they can i said they really come at you like this he goes it can it can happen always we're gonna come from the side we're gonna do all kinds of shit we're gonna do different defense mechanisms and when i tell you this dude ran at me he ran at me exactly the way we was practicing his mother said what he was <laughs> i said that's that's what we learned. You're like, thank you. and, and it was like slow motion. And that motherfucker came at me. And I don't fight. I'm not in, I don't get in the fight. Some people got a lot of fight. You Did you fight a lot? No. I never fought a lot. And so this motherfucker attacked me, came and tried to tackle me in the street. But I, he grabbed me. And so I learned, you know, I learned you can flip somebody on their back. Yeah. You use their, you use their momentum. Weight. So I used the momentum and I flipped them on his back. Bong, right in the middle of the street. And I'm like, that, yo, that shit worked. That shit worked. So I'm on top of him like this. But I'm like, this is a white dude. Yeah. But if the police see me, they're going to get me first. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yo, my man, yo, chill, man. I'm, I'm, I'm still working, man. Yo, leave me the fuck alone. And, you know, I'm nervous. Right. So I'm like, damn. He goes, yo, get the fuck off me. I said, yo, leave me alone. So I, so I get off him, right? Yeah. So this motherfucker rips my shirt. I'm hosting, rips my shirt. So my shirt is ripped. Okay. There's a, there's a t-shirt store right next to us, right? There's an Indian man in the window washing the shit, right? And so people are, you know, people get around, oh hurt. shit. So I square up with this mother, this mother's coming at me. So I was like, dude, he's, his hands are down. So I, I could kick really fast. Right. So I was like, yo, I could kick him in the face, kick him in the face. So they were like, get him, got him. Bomb, caught him, knocked him out, pow, caught him. It was, it was a um, roundhouse kick, yeah. bomb, caught him on a lefty, pop, caught him. He fell into the gate, bomb, and I ran, ran to the to the t-shirt shop. Yeah, and the guy's like, "Motherfucker, you kicked that motherfucker so quickly. How do you do that? That was great. <laughs> that was a great kick, man. What the fuck was that?" And I and he and I bought a Bruce Lee shirt that had ah! that had what the on the back. Yeah. I'm not even. I can't make this up. So when so so I go back. So I go downstairs. Louis C.K. is getting off stage, and everyone goes, "What happened to your shirt?" And we. <laughs> Don't even worry about yeah, it. Yeah. I love Bruce Lee. So that, and then when I came back up, after the show was over, the police were there. Dude's face, he's holding his face like, he's right there. I go, yo, he attacked me first. And the police almost didn't believe me. I said, he attacked me first. And he goes, and, and I, and the cops were like, I go, oh, I'm sorry. This is when racism kicks in, right? The black dude had to have done it. They said, no, it's not like that. I said, no, nah, but he attacked me first. And then he tried to rush me again. And I fucking clocked him with a, a jab. I had a quick jab. Pum! With the police standing right there? Yeah, he tried, but he was attacked. White. He was like, yeah, pow, hit him right in his mouth. But I don't, I don't fight. But it was just being, I was in martial, I was training a lot. Right. So I was like, man, I was ha. I was like, shit. <laughs> so has anybody tried to run up on stage? No, no one's run up on stage ever with the Will Smith thing. Yeah. A lot of people were getting real, you know, from it happened at, uh, at the Hollywood Bowl with Dave Chappelle. Yeah, with the Hollywood Bowl. But, you know, sometimes it happens. And I try to warn people. I try to say this on stage. I go, yeah, man, don't, don't be starting to feel Will Smith, man, because I'm going to tell you something. I got a quick foot. You come into the stage, bang, bang, and I got this mic stand. It has a metal end on it. I'm going to put you in a coma, boy. Come on, I, I, you know, I, right. I, I don't, I'm talking shit, man. Right. You know what I mean? So that's, Have, do you write jokes for other comedians? No. 
You only write jokes for Fuck Godfrey. <laughs> no, I don't write jokes. I will help people with like a, hey, man, you know what you should say with that? I don't write, write jokes for other. No, I just write stuff for myself. All my shit's myself. But no, I don't really write jokes you know what I'm saying? For other people. Right. I might give you a tag or something like, yo, why don't you add that to it? Right. But yeah, I'm, I'm all about me. I ain't shit. If I were to, if I were to say, Godfrey, yeah. compare you to an athlete, your, your c- comedic style. Yes. Are you LeBron? You Jordan? You Kobe? You Mahomes? You Brady? You Shohei Otani? Jerry Rice. Oh, you, do, you, you. Jerry you. Rice. Precise. Routes. Boom. Bong. You know what I mean? Mm, okay. mm, ah, unstoppable. Jerry Rice. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you like that one. I huh? did. I did. Huh? I did. Yeah. yeah. Good routes. Mm, cha. Pong. You know, clean. Touchdown. Barely gets dirty. That's me. So if you precise had, shit. If you had stuck with football, you think you could have made it? I don't know. Because there were Do you guys wish that you were, had a- there were guys that were better than me. They were better well, than there's me. There's a chance that you weren't gonna make it anymore. I don't think you don't so. You know how it works, right? What? That's how it works. Like, guy better than you, he get the job. Yeah. And that's what's beautiful about sports. I didn't make it because I wasn't shit. <laughs> that's what's fair. Shannon, you made it because you were dope as fuck. You were really good. You beat out cats. Yeah. You, that's, sports is great. You're on the bench because you ain't shit. Right. Sit your ass down. You are third string. But what about if the coach don't like you? That happens too. Sometimes it happens. But if you have to win... You fuck that, put them in. Right. You have to put them in. I'm right. sure there's plenty of athletes that aren't getting along, but you got to put them in. Yeah, you try to win. We got to win. Yes. We're trying to win. Yes. But in our business, you can just be liked and they'll let you rock. Right. Our business lets the mediocre thrive. Right. And I, listen, I didn't say I'm the greatest, but I ain't the worst. And I don't like it when I see mediocre people rise. I hate mediocrity. I don't like it. And I want to be called out for my mediocrity. Right. If I'm mediocre, tell me too. But I, there's a lot of mediocre comics stinking up stages. Right. That's what I say. I said it. A lot of you are mediocre as fuck. Stay the fuck off stage. Damn. Yeah, like- I said it. Check this out. We see Tim. He's going Tim, to 80 Tim, million. Tim, Tim, the king of trap music, one of the biggest. Oh, you I know, mean, you know. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, you had. Go ahead. You had to be with Tip. What, what, what you, about? I, I just want you to know right now before you go any further, I'm going to side with Tip. <laughs> I just figured out. So, so whatever you say, I'm doing You're an tip. asshole, man. <laughs> just so, just so we clear. I don't want no bits of He's understand. like, this. he from South? I'm from South. I don't yep. give a damn. Yep. Like yep. my grandmother said. <laughs> <laughs> if it's two frogs on the pond, we're going to sit up there on each other. What? <laughs> Listen. So, so what happened? Okay. First of all, me and Tip are cool as hell. Right. Plain and simple. I'm a Tip fan. Always have been. Okay. So I'm in Atlanta, Atlanta Comedy Theater. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and Atlanta, I wanted to go to Atlanta because I just wanted to be there. All the women, I just wanted to be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. A, ah. Yeah. And so I go. I I was I didn't really want to go to that club because I always hear about fights and all kind of shit. But I had to go to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. So one day I'm on stage. I do hour forty of straight. Fire. Right? Yeah. And I get my boy is hosting. He goes, hey, man, I'm going to keep the show going. I go, for what? I'm like, I'm the headline. It's done. It's done. He goes, uh, T.I. wants to go up. And I go, for what? The fuck is it? I, I, I was like, is he doing, is he going to sing? It's his city. Yeah, he go rap. He gonna, yeah. He goes, yeah. no, he's doing comedy. I said, oh. So I get off stage and I see Tip. In the, in the, in the green room. There's yeah. two green rooms at the, uh, I don't know if you've ever been there. No, I, yeah, there's two green rooms. And I see him. I go, he go, hey, man, what's up, guy? Man? How you doing, man? I was like, yo. I said, what's up, Tip? My mom I said, yo, man. He said, you doing comedy today? Comedy? He said, yeah. I was like, okay. I just was like, I don't fucking know. Because a lot of times people approach comedy like it's a fucking hobby. It's not a hobby. It's right. a real deal. It's right. your life for real. Um, and I just like, okay. And I went back to the green room to de- decompress because I'm just hour and a half. I'm that's what I do. I go to the green room and chill the fuck out. And so, and so I'm like, wow, he's doing comedy. That's crazy. And then um, the next, the following week, I went on my podcast in God Free We Trust on the Gas Digital Network. I I I went on my podcast and we were talking about it. I said, yeah, Ti is doing comedy. It was like, everybody seems to just be going to comedy like it's that easy. I mean, I don't have the, I'm not the gatekeeper to comedy, but I just, just like thought it was funny. And then I go, then they said, yo, did you go watch him? I go, no, 
For what? I'm the comedian. Why am I going to watch him do what I do better than him for? That's what I said. That's what I said. Right. I said, I'm, I'm, it's not a disrespect to him. I just right. don't believe he's right. trying to do comedy. Right. And so that excerpt got spread around. Mm -hmm. And sh uh, there was Shuler King called me. There was some other comedian saying, man, you good, man? I woke up to it. You good? I said, yeah, I'm good. What's up? He said, man, T.I., you know when T.I. goes in the woods? Yeah. When he goes in the woods, he goes like, man, I'm about to get something out of my chest. <laughs> Uh, apparently, expeditiously, <laughs> psychologically, and scientifically, uh, somebody, you know, and I'm a big fan of comedy, but I felt I was disrespected by, and, he, and I saw that someone sent it to me, and I was like, shit, he took that shit the wrong way. You know what I mean? Right. So he felt that I disrespected him, and he's like, I'm a, I'm a fan of these guys. I've always been a fan of comedy. Mm -hmm. And it's natural for an artist to want to do other things in the arts. Which Correct. Totally get it, you know? And so I'm. this is a time when I was writing on Nick Cannon's daytime talk show. I was writing on, see, Nick always be hiring people. So yeah. I was writing on, and I told Nick, I said, Nick, did you hear what happened? He goes, Nick's like, what? No, I said, I showed him Tip's thing. Right. And he goes, oh, Tip is just in his feelings, man, because, you know, he you know, he didn't know he was doing comedy. But I'll call him. I said, call him right now. Call him. I want to FaceTime him so I can tell him face to face. And so I say, hey, man. Hey, Tip, man, I didn't mean any harm with that. I just didn't know you was doing comedy like that because so many people fuck around in comedy and shouldn't they fuck around like it's easy. Right. Because that's like me coming after you and start rapping after you said, I'm out. It was like, yo, Tip. Godfrey got some rhymes he wants to drop. Yeah, yeah. And he goes, nah, you right, you right, that's true. But man, you know, I've been watching comedy, comedy view, watch all y'all, man. I respect it and all that. I said, that's cool. I, hey, man, more power to you. If you about that shit, cool. I just know that people take comedy for granted and there's a lot of bums in here doing it. That's I was coming from that perspective. Right. But you can do whatever the fuck you want. I, let me ask you this. I had Mo Monique on the show. Yes, Monique. And her... And I think DL had a disagreement about headlining. Mm -hmm. You felt that you was the headliner. Yes. Once you had done yours, yes. it should have been over. Yes. So had Tip performed before you, would you have had? An I would have been okay with okay. that. Okay. If you, it, it's it's the chron chronology of it. Okay. It's just in 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 show business, headliner. There's a reason why you're the headliner. Right. Just if you would have said, "Hey, Tip wants to go up before you," cool. It's his city. Right. Cool. That's yeah, cool. But yeah. after me, no. Right. That's okay. like that's okay. unless unless it was okay. George Wallace walked in, and I go hell yeah, right? George mm -hmm. be like, man, you're just stupid. I'm I'm, I'm gonna come on here. I'm gonna do a couple of jokes. You know, fuck everybody. Fuck tip. Fuck ti. Fuck you. Fuck everybody. Yeah, I, I would be like, yeah. George Wallace is going up. I go, he's five star general. Right. Rock is here. Five star general. Seinfeld. I'm gonna Seinfeld. Five star general. That's different. Right. But okay. T.I., you're a rapper. I don't know. You're, you're a hip hop. Right. I, I listen to your shit on my shit. Um, so that's what, so okay. we, we squashed it. We squashed it. He came on my podcast. We squashed it. It was, it's all good, man. And he calls me whenever, sometimes he's in New York. He wants to get stage. I try to get him on stages. Yeah, but we all good. He's taking it seriously. Yeah. So I'm, I have more power to him, man. What, what comedian you say has helped you the most? It's giving you the, the best advice. Ooh. Bill Cosby. Jerry Seinfeld and um, who else? Who else is giving me good advice? Um, Joan Rivers gave me some too. Oh, I you didn't take all the Cosby advice, did you? I did. Well, not. You got to put the pill <laughs> in the drink, and you got to stir it while she's not looking. You go, hey, look over there. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> no, <laughs> he told me writing is the key. And he remember he says, "Son, I want you to see the word. See show business. What is the bigger word?" Always remember, business, you got to have the business. He, so that, I took that. I took the Seinfeld. Um, that was um, important. Um, yeah, but... Um, Spoke to Joan Rivers, said she gave Joan Rivers it. just said, just keep... I love your honesty. Oh, just keep doing it. You're so funny. You're so talented. She, it was in Montreal, man. I got to meet her, man. It was crazy because she wanted to meet me. Is that the big show up in Montreal where all the comedians go? Yeah, they just, they just X that. It's done. Oh, it's done. Bankruptcy, all that shit. Done. No more Montreal. Oh. And that was the biggest one in the world. Yes. And it Because Lorel told us about that, that they, yeah. the comedians go there and then they yeah. have, they have big, big people come yeah. watch different comedians and all this other shit, shatter some dreams, you know, shit like that. Damn. Mm -hmm. It's done. 
They got maybe Melbourne Comedy Festival, but they got other little festivals. But Montreal was like right. the main. But that shit's gone. Right. But that was the, that's the advice I took. And you know, Tony Woods gave me advice. Tony right. Woods, like regular dudes have, but those were the main ones that gave me advice on stuff. You know, you you. Your career. Yes. Do you feel you've been blackballed? Do you feel that there have been opportunities that w- that you should have or could have been presented, but there were obstacles placed in your way? Ah, <sighs> shit. Um, I don't think... I've asked my agents to ask around if I'm blackballed. I ask, say, please go ask around. Because first of all, one thing about Hollywood, they're not honest. People will be like, we loved you. And then they'll say, yeah, get rid of him. You know what I mean? Right. And I like, I try to surround myself with people who are honest with me. Right. I want people to, but I, people say, no, there's nothing you haven't, I said, did I say anything that was, cause if it's my act, I think that's unfair. I should be able to express myself the way How I want feel? to, but I don't think so. I ain't, I ain't fucking with my wife. I ain't flirting with no man. No man. I don't owe nobody no money. Not that you know of. I don't know. Not that I know. I do know of. I ain't getting no <laughs> man pregnant. No nothing. I'm right. always in my own lane, man. Right. But I don't think I've been blackballed. I I would hope not. Shit, you know. But I think that sometimes there's an intimidation to certain things. I think there's some right. intimidation. I don't know. I don't really want to dumb myself down for anybody. That just comes from that Nigerian pride, right. man. What you right. wanted to it on pride. So could you have, do, do you, as you look back. Yeah. Um, you say you've been in the, uh, the comedy game for 27 years. Yeah. As you look back, mm-hmm. is there anything you could have done differently? Could you have marketed yourself differently? No, I don't think so, man. Cause now with the social media before it was everybody did the same shit. Oh yeah. You go to auditions, you try. You go to auditions, you go, you, you do, you do shows, you go on the road. It was the same kind of schematic, man. You try to rub elbows, you try to get invited to as much shit as you can, but now it's different. Now you can make it choose like you're not putting up any content. You could be doing a podcast, right? You could be now, I'm, but I'm doing all of that. I, I went along with the wind. I said, okay, right. let me start social media. I, I embraced that shit about six, seven years ago. I embraced it. I said, let me get off my ass and do it. And it yeah. worked for me. It really did work for me. It like revitalized the shit I was doing. But as far as like the Hollywood, Hollywood in, in, I'm not really in, in, I'm in, but not in, in. Right. I was like, how do you get there? Right. Then I hear all this creepy shit in order to do that. And you got like, do- I don't want to be there. Ah, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, it might be. I don't know if it's true or untrue, but it's always like, ah, uh, how do I get there? Right. You got to, ah, uh, you know what I'm saying? Well, the, 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 wh- you mentioned gatekeepers and you say they're, they're, you know, yeah. but is there, is there, you wish someone had opened the gate or given you a, yeah. a help lift God for you? That would up. be great. I know people in positions that I've known for years that are like in position and they just fucking go, ah. Eh. They just act like they don't know you anymore. I, I'm telling you, it's like, mm. cr- like straight transformation. Right. So this whole time, you was always that dude, just waiting, faking right. it till you make it. Right. And and so you go, oh my boy, he's a he's a, a showrunner right here. I've known him for years when we were coming up. Nothing. I've seen actors get a commercial and act like they don't know you. I said, motherfucker, that was Burger King. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> Shit. I mean, I was a Seven Up guy for right. two years after yeah. Orlando Jones. But I was still the same guy because it's transient. That shit comes and goes. I was a seven up dude. I'm gonna keep it 100. That was a that was a big moment to advertise for a product mm-hmm. in America. Yes, I know all the jingles of all the different right. Doc B a pepper drink. I know all the shit. Now yeah. I'm like a oh, seven up. What? Right. So even though I was getting shit, I still was that guy because that shit comes and goes. Godfrey, I'm sitting here listening to you. Yes. How were you able to like? You can like in and out. You can have the accent Nigerian, but you speak very American. I'm, I was born here. I don't give a damn. I was but, born. I but let me ask you a question what? because I, I I know a lot of people. Yeah. That came from other countries. Yes. When they're in their own home, they speak the native language. That's when they go outside, they talk about. What's up? Yeah. It's just it's switch. It's cold. Did you did you did your parents have you speak Nigerian at home? No. My I'm gonna be honest. My parents, man. They got, they admit it. My mother said, yeah, we got, we were lazy. We didn't, we were supposed to teach you Igbo. We were speaking to you, you know, but we got lazy. They got a little lazy. Okay. I wish they would have like spoken because my sister knows the language yeah. when they're speaking because my parents would use broken English, pigeon English. And my sister knew when they were speaking straight Igbo because she was born there. She, 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 pigeon English. I don't know, but I know pigeon, pigeon toad. <laughs> 
<laughs> pigeon toe. I know about pigeon toe, but I, yeah, I don't know. I know, I know about, I know about stool pigeon. Yeah, I know about pigeon toe. <laughs> I, I, I mean, so pigeon is like you know, like they said, what are you saying? What are you doing? Making mouth. Going. It's like when you hear Afro beats. Yeah, they use a lot of pigeon in that. Okay. I say, I be, what are you doing? Make it, you know, that's, that, it's like English, it's like patois. Okay. With the Jamaicans. Kind yeah, of. yeah, yeah. It's English, but it's like, it's cut up and, you know, yeah. and it's like a way that they, I was just in Nigeria in December, which was great, which was fantastic. And you know, a lot of Nigerian Americans get a lot of hard time from Nigerians that were born there. They say, you're not, the, you're not really, uh, you're Americanized. I go, my parents can't, that's not their fault. Because, right. you know, there was a thing called the Biafra Wars in the 1960s. There was Biafra War. It was a tribal war. My Igbos were getting killed. Right. My parents, my father changed our name. My last name is Dan Chima. But our name was Chima. But my father changed it so we could survive and get the fuck out of Nigeria. It was right. Biafra War. That's why I was born here. Right. What's really fucked up is that Nigerians will say, not all of them, but someone will say, you're not really Nigerian. I say, yes, I am. If my parents are Nigerian, I come out Nigerian. Right. Period. Right. When you see an Asian man, no matter where they are, you go, look at that Asian guy over there. Right. You connect them to their continent. Yeah, they don't say just because he was born in the States. Or and, and I know I know some Southern Asian. I, I'm Chinese. I'm like, I'm, I'm from Texas. But you'll still say, oh, the Asian guy right. is from Texas. Right. They already connect them. But for some reason, when it comes to the African life or the career, it's like all of a sudden you're not, I'm not African, but you believe the white South African, right. though. You believe the white guy that's African, but right. I, who have the genes, I, just because I was born here, or British African, they'll give a, a British Nigerian more respect than an American Nigerian. There's a lot of Nigerian Americans, Ethiopian Americans, Congolese Americans, I, they're here. We are still African. I don't care that I, I don't know the language. Oh, so I'm still African. Now, if you were to ask me, are you Nigerian? I'd be like, hell no, I ain't Nigerian. I'm American. The Nigerian would be like, how can you say that? <laughs> well, how can you, you, you embarrassed us all? Why are you a Niger? You, how can you, all oh, your mother ain't built? See? Yeah. So, fuck that. They want it both ways, huh? They want it both ways. So I'm glad I went back to Nigeria. I, I hadn't been there since I was a, te uh, a teenager and my parents are gone now, you know, which is crazy. My mother passed away first. Mm -hmm. Mother passed leukemia, so yeah. ah, to hear the that. cancer thing. My parents married forty something years. Mm -hmm. That shit was crazy, and to see your mother, your your first superheroes were your parents. Your mother, your father, they gave you everything. You know, if it weren't for them leaving Nigeria, surviving a Biafra war, I wouldn't even be sitting here in Club Shay Shay if it weren't for them and mm. that hard work, right. busting their ass. And I always thank God for that. Like they would, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be doing comedy, right. none of that shit, and. My father died after that, mm -hmm. you know, and to see my mother, that was crazy to see my mother, um, like tell me that she has, she's like, has can't, that shit was, I don't ever want to live that shit again, but that was crazy. Your mother who's strong and boom, boom, boom. And then she's in and out of hospitals and then she had six months to live, but she lived the eight extra, wow. you know, awesome. and my parents renewed their vows at the time. And then my father has a very strong voice. Godfrey, come here. That's my dad. Because I always say he sounded like the Lion King. Yeah. Godfrey, go yeah. yeah, my father. And my father always had a strong voice, strong voice, strong voice. But then when my mother was passing, was going to pass away, my mother, my father, when he knew it was about that time, that was the weakest I ever heard my father's voice. He's like, he was just, it was just weak. And I said, damn. And then she died while I was doing the seven up commercials. That's what happened. She died right in the middle of it. And I got it, I kept it to myself. Cause I don't like that attention. Right. I don't know if you've had people mm -hmm. pass on you. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, shit, my, cause my cousin called crying, balling. And my brother, my poor brother, Daniel, he had to see, he saw both my parents go mm. in front of him. Right. And so my father lived along another like 10, 10, 11 years. But every time I would visit my father in Chicago, you could see his, it's just empty without my, without my mother gone. Yeah. You, it just, he, part he of just, him died when she man. Died. And I, and they say, my father was always healthy. My father would never caught colds. He was always eating healthy and he just went. I think it was broken heart. Mm -hmm. So, and you, and, and, and what freaked me out was when my father passed, you know, you got to go see the, see him in, you know, see him at the funeral home. Mm -hmm. I had a show at my sister's alma mater, Loyola University. Right. 
I had to, I had to do a show at, at her university, a college show. And then I had to see my father's body a couple months, a couple blocks away. Right after I had to get off and go, good night. And then go and see my father's body. Just my dad, just there in his traditional garb. That shit. Ah. Yeah. So, but I thank God if it weren't for them, you know, I wouldn't even, and they saw some of my success, which right. was great. That's it awesome. was great. Cause my father was a CNN guy mm -hmm. and I got to get on CNN. Cause that's all he watched. Right. He thought I was the greatest thing in the world because that was when Michael Richards, remember my, Michael Richards from Seinfeld snap yeah. used the N word. Yeah. I was, I was around Michael Richards about a week before that. I used to do shows with that crazy motherfucker. And then they called me CNN. Anderson Cooper show was like, God, they want you to come CNN and talk about the Michael Richards shit. And I got on there and talked about the Michael Richards shit. My father saw it and went crazy because that's all he watches. Right. He says, I, you, I called all the Nigerians in Chicago, you were on CNN, you know, shit like that. So all my, my successes, even though I was a pre-med psych major and I wanted to get into psychiatry and, but once I decided to be a comedian, you know, you know, you know, your friends are like, well, at least get your degree for, and then you right. can, you know, right. just in case you fail, you can boom. But, um, yeah, I ended up doing okay. You were born in Nebraska. Yeah. Did you have a bunch of black friends? Cause I, uh, I didn't, I was born in Nebraska. I was a baby. I grew up in Chicago. So you had a bunch of black friends. Bunch of black <laughs> friends. <laughs> I had all my friends and you know, my friends were, I had friends, African American, of course. Yeah. Nigerians, Indians, Koreans. Okay. Cambodians. Yeah, wow. Vietnamese, Laos, Chinese, Polish. We were, it was very immigrant oriented in that area okay. uptown uptown area that's the most integrated area in chicago okay so my friends were immigrant kids and african-americans of right. course and white americans and yeah so i had a the only time i got culture shock was when i went to all white schools that's when it was not well i don't know if it's culture shock but it was just like racism and all that shit right. being called n word and shit i was called n word in class english class my honors english class in high school i called me n word it was like three you know it's always three against one so they were like they call me, and it was like they they whispered it, fucking nigger, like that, <laughs> fucking nigger, fucking nigger. I was like, I was like, me, <laughs> <laughs> fucking nigger. Yeah, you're fucking nigger. I was like, me. I'm looking, like, me? and they're like, yeah, fucking you, nigger. I was like, what the fuck? And my teacher was black. Mrs. What'd you say? She. You know, when I look back, I go, she probably was having problems with her, the faculty herself. Right. She didn't say shit. I was just like, oh, fuck, you fucking nigger. I thought, and they said it just like that. You're a fucking nigger. <laughs> and so I thought they were mispronouncing Nigerian. I didn't know. No. Nah, I said, there's only one G. <laughs> the G is soft. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's what I was going through for. You know. What's your thoughts on marriage? Oh shit! Same as yours. Oh, you? I want to get married. You? Uh, you do? <laughs> you don't look like you do. Look at your face. <laughs> the, I'm, look, I, this is what, I, marriage is a great institution. Yeah, yeah. I don't believe I need to be institutionalized. <laughs> 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 well, I man, no. There's a new woman out here, boy. Ooh, I might have to. I might marry AI. This shit is horrible. God damn. No, listen. Not all women are bad, but I've been single for a long time, man. Try to get used to it, don't you? My best. It's so fun. My freedom. You know how we fight for freedoms, financial mm -hmm. freedom. Mental freedom. Yeah. And when you get it, you see, people trying to make you feel bad. I'm yeah. like, yeah. I, if, if I get to where, you know, I want to be with somebody special, fuck yeah. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I like, cause I travel so much. Don't right. you try? I travel, I travel so much. I travel a lot now. A lot. Yeah. And I'm just saying, and this is not knocking anybody. And I don't want some girl that I may know. She's like, I saw your interview and you didn't you shut up. You know what I mean? It's just, I, I like my freedom. I like when I can go, where are you going? None of your damn business. Yeah. I like that. I like not someone not checking my phone and oh, all that shit. Do my, you have kids? None. As far as I know, man, my pullout game is ridiculous. Like an inside fastball. Ball one. <laughs> <laughs> ball. Now, how, if, if you, no, 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 no. You the guy with the color. You who you are, if you had kids, you know about it. No, if it was like a, 
a high fastball, then I'll be like, I left it in. Yeah, yeah. But I'm like, huh, ball change. You don't want, I mean, you don't want somebody. I didn't to say I didn't want it. I didn't say I didn't want it. What the hell would you wait on? How many you got? Three. Yeah, you damn, you're lucky, man. But I don't got, I don't have anything. I just didn't never. Here's what's fucked up. Father would be like, be, don't get anybody pregnant. This, this, that, right? Be yeah. careful. Condoms. Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden, I'm like, I have nobody pregnant. He's like, when are you going to get children? I'm like, wow, shit. Right. I just, it just didn't, I had a girl for like 10 years. She didn't want a kid. She didn't want kids or anything. So I was just used to not, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't have Don't any. you want a trait? I don't mind, but let me tell you something. Once I get more movies and shit and I get my money up more, I'm decent. I'm cool. Well, you, you, I want, you I want money for children, man. Children are expensive, man. Godfrey. Shit. You've been in the comedy game for 27 years. Yeah. You're and not married and you don't have kids. Yeah. You should have a nice little bankroll. It's not bad, but ugh, I can have more. I need series money. You know what I'm saying? I need to get on a series, not parts here and there. People think because you get on TV, you just getting money. No. Sometimes you're getting a scale shit. You know what I mean? What about a series that half these motherfuckers be on? It'd be the same ass motherfuckers on stuff. Why don't you pick new people? Pick new people, God, man. Damn, damn, God, I mean, right now, it sounds like you do a little lightweight hating. No, I'm not hating. A little lightweight. Not I'm heavy, not, not no heavy. I'm not, light, I mean, I'm the, not the, lightweight hating, but there's room for everybody. Look at all these streaming services. But it'd be the same people showing up on all the different services. Spread it out. You got YouTube, right? I got, yeah, yeah, okay, YouTube. Okay, put your own shit out. Everybody. I mean, put your own stuff out. <laughs> you cursed. <too> little, little, <laughs> <laughs> you even said bullshit. You said bull, John. You're like, bullshit, John. Yeah. But. You said but bullshit, I got John. the edit button. <laughs> <laughs> bullshit, John. <laughs> yeah, maybe you just create your own. I love how you, people say create your own. Okay. Club Shay Shay, you created your own, right? Yeah. But you were already dope, though. You came off of FS1. You came, you know, you already like had your like, huh? But you Godfrey. All you right. already got a name. Oh, you make it seem like you start from scratch. You were on a series every day. You were on a series every day, Shannon. Every day for how many years? Seven? Six and a half. Six and a half. Mm-hmm. Every single day in people's houses. Yeah. Shit. Then you move. It's easy to transition. You've been a kid. You've been in comedy. People know you and, for 27 years. And. But they sometimes these fucking networks be like, ah, uh, eh, I don't know. I'm just saying, you know, you get well. Okay, I, okay. I Let's just say both of us are going for a show. Who they gonna pick? You, because you have more. Uh, you, it's just what it is, which I understand. Mm-hmm. I got to get more of that, though. I think I don't know. I shit. I can't figure this shit out, man. So did IG suspended your account. Did they tell you uh, why? They said I, I went against community guides and I would look up the reason. It'd be like, cause I told someone to fuck off or da 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 da, regular shit. No, nothing political. And they just blocked me. And now, and then they suspended me cause of, I called someone a fathead. <laughs> fathead. They called me names and I said it. And that's, it was all just name calling and right. talking shit. That's it. That's what I do for a living. So I'm, I'm, yeah, my shit's is suspended. So I got that. I had to start a new one over. I said, Godfrey comic is the new one. Everybody follow me so I can get my shit back. But I don't know. I don't know. That's, that's what's happening. I no kids. No. Yeah. I hope I, maybe I'll get kids. I don't know. But the, why are you, why aren't you married? Like again? Uh, because I don't, I don't multitask well. Do I'm mean? addicted to success because I can't do two things. My career. Club Shay Shay, Nightcap, yeah. first, first take. That's a lot. Takes up so much of my time. So I'm doing seven to ten shows. I'm taping seven to ten shows a week. Damn. So a lot. And 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 if somebody is not as mo I'm obsessed. Yeah. Which with is- this. Yeah. Nothing wrong with it. It's that. hard to be obsessed with two things. So how are you going? You gotta it has to be a, a person that understands that? Yes. Yeah. And people be. say they understand it until and they're living yep. in it. Yep. Yep. It's true. Everybody says, oh, I understand structure and I understand discipline and I understand yeah. dedication and determination. Supposedly. Until you actually get with someone that's devout about that. Right. And it, it's, yeah, it's hard. And I, I get complaints. They get despondent. They get mad. They don't speak to you. So I get that shit all the time, man. Mm-hmm. And it's, it, in a way, it's fucked up. But in a way, I like that I'm not thinking about anybody. Right. I like, it's like, I have, Oh, I have, like, I'm really good friends with my ex-girlfriend, really good friends. We're good friends, better as 
friends. Friend. Then, but yeah. other than that, they say you 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 gonna be you gonna be all alone one day. I go no. I'm not going to be alone. I just want to be left the fuck alone. It's different. <laughs> it's a big difference. Like, even if I live with you, go over there. The, the, you got the, two TVs. Two yeah. things can be true. Yeah. Being alone is not bad. Right. It's being lonely. That's different. And I like my time. I like my my time by myself. Do you? I, I love, love that shit. I love I it. I can spend hours by my damn I self. I can. If you're a reader, if you're an information type of guy, that's why I say I like to read a lot. Information. Comedy's information, by yes. the way, too. Mm -hmm. Reading. I tell comics, they'll read a lot of shit. Don't, nothing's too stupid for you. Go to the museum. Go. I can do all that by myself. Right. You go to the gym, you work out on your own. I do. Yeah, you're like me. I can... To, to drag for people to go to the gym sometimes, oh, I, don't, I gotta go. Yeah. I do, I've done a lot of stuff on my own. Travel by myself. Mm -hmm. I don't travel with a crew of people. I travel by myself. Right. You travel with a crew? Uh, I don't to... travel unless I'm going from point A to point B. I'm huh? doing first take. I'm doing something for a club Shay Shay. Everything is here? I'm, I'm based out of LA. Everything I... is, everything you do is here. Oh, yeah, that's mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see? But yeah, I don't, if someone comes by and understand, it's good. It's good. I don't, I hope I get something off before I, uh, I don't know. I mean, I get too old. I mean, I, dang. I mean, what, you know, what? them swimmers don't have the same pizzazz as we start to age. Man, with all this technology, I got an AI sperm, boy. Man. What you mean? AI sperm, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I have an AI baby and say, wah, wah. <laughs> you, you, do a, you do a President Obama too, though, right? Uh, I'm just going to tell you right now. Uh, I think Club Shay Shay. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was nasty, wasn't it? Uh, how many I, did I do? I did a couple of them. You did? Yeah, yeah that's I not bad. Know, you, you and uh, Jay. So. Jay Farrell's man. Jay, Jay say he, he, he's the best. Let him be. I'm not trying to claim it. It's, it's other people's voices. Who gives a shit? I know um, Ari Spears goes, yo, God. Yo, when I saw you do Paul Mooney, yo, I think I got mine over yours. I can do him. And I was like, I was like. Nigga, you crazy. <laughs> My Paul Mooney is the best. No one ever does Paul Mooney better than me. Thank you, know you for stopping by the club. Yo, I appreciate Godfrey. you. Godfrey. Yo, thank you. This was, this was a privilege, man. Privilege. Watch it. <laughs> all my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice. That's why all my life, I've been grinding all my life. Yeah. All my life. Grinding all my life, sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. Want a slice? Got to roll the dice. That's why all my life I've been grinding all my life.